Take a little break and then uh, then you make the long trip to win. That'll give us time to get motivated for that trip to win. That's yeah, and by far win's and typically got a pretty good football team. It's going to be interesting to see. I saw on Facebook they had put in new turf. You know that tornado hit right. hit wind like tore down the. I didn't see a press box. School. No, there's no press box. There's no stands, or at least what I saw. I didn't now see. I don't know what they've done since then, but um, we'll, we'll we'll be finding out over the next couple of weeks and, and let you know. And I'm sure that the schools will be in touch also just to let you know what we have. We may be, um, you know, it's a bad time that bad time for me to get rid of my truck a, a year ago. I guess we have to drive your truck to win we, and we do, do it do on that. the back of your pickup truck. We can do but, that. Uh, Let's see. I'm, uh, yeah, they, uh, there was a picture on here this week. There it is right there on one side. Oh, it's like the home side over there. I'm going to say, if nothing else, they, I know that's not, and that's not temporary stands. That looks like. Uh, bleachers. I guess yeah. we could always. Let's see if there's a spot on the. I don't know. We'll find. We'll find somewhere to go. Yeah, we'll, yeah. There, there'll be a place, and I'm. I'm sure we won't be. Well, we might be the first team to broadcast from there. But they uh, do have a radio station. Yeah, they've got one from for themselves. Yeah, we have to get a hold of this. So, Fourteen hundred AM. I, I looked them up. I, yeah. So I'll, I'll be in touch with him over the next couple of weeks. Right yeah. now. Right now, we just want to. Or about cross it. Beat the cross at Eagles, and um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how many years. But Magna and Crossett have played. I played a lot of football. I was looking games on together. Fearless it's Friday a, since 2001. Magnolia's got a 15 and seven advantage. Chris Gillum may know how many times we've played them. A bunch. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not more than that. I mean, no, yeah, a lot, a lot no, of that's just they, 2001. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, long we played back when I was in school here in the 80s. That was always the first game. You knew, uh, you knew, and, and for the longest time, Magnolia had Crossett's number. Then the tide kind of changed. Like I say, since 2001, it's 15 for Magnolia, 7 for Crossed. But it's always, last year was an exception. Most time the games are close. Last year was an exception. Yeah, it really was. And, and I I go back to this every year, and it's been how many years ago. Mark and I were doing the games together back, and I don't even know who the coach was. They've had two or three coaches since then at Crossed. But they had a young man that played wide. It ended up coming a few years later after I think spending a year or two out of school, came to SAU as a wide receiver. A very good wide receiver, but they just had their way with Magnolia in the first half at Crossit, and then second half Magnolia had their way with them and ended up winning the football game. And there were there were uh, two or three years like that, and I think they changed coaches. Well, they got a guy this uh, name Jermal Nalls. He's a he's a sophomore. He's a tight end H back. That name sure sounds familiar to me as a Crossit Eagle from yesteryear. Uh, that, uh, that 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 when I saw that name, I thought, man, I think they had a Nalls that that was you know about that time frame you know where he was a outstanding receiver. So could could be some bloodlines there. Yeah, could be. Um, and Nalls, and Nalls, they just had him. They just had him highlighted on that roster. But as far as what the Cross Radio crew sent me, the yeah, they had him down as an H back or tight end or wide receiver. Yeah. So I just kind of stuck him in there where we could. Or we could find him if we needed to do. And uh, that, right. that 6-3 receiver there, Max Taunton, is one that I don't think they had on theirs. But uh, but Coach King had him marked down on theirs. So it's going to be going to be interesting to see. But we know, like you said, that that, uh, that quarterback, that's a, that's a pretty good quarterback, that Max Brooks. Yeah, and that, like I say, their running back was an all-conference receiver, uh, Isaiah Button. They moved him to the offense, I mean to the uh, running back position. And uh, he'll he'll be their feature back uh, out of the backfield. Dan Gregory and Jeff Harrington from Panther Stadium here tonight. As uh, clock says, we're just right around seven minutes away from kickoff here at Panther Stadium between the Mule Riders and the Crossed Eagles. We'll take another break on our Farmers Bank and Trust pregame show. This is Panther Football. That's the sizzle of McDonald's new hotter and juicier 100% fresh beef quarter pounder burger. Sounds good, right? Hold up, you can't hear that mouth-watering sound or taste that beefy, melty, cheesy deliciousness until you order yours, because that's when they cook it. So if you want to hear this, followed by this, mm. hit this, and turn into McDonald's now. McDonald's new hotter and juicier Quarter Pounder Burgers. So good, they'll leave you speechless. Hotter and juicier compared to prior Quarter Pound Beef Patty. Available in most restaurants in contiguous U.S. Not available in Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. Getting your prescriptions filled is easy at Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Become one of their many satisfied customers. You can refill your prescriptions with Prince Pharmacy's mobile app, also with their website, PrincePharmacyRx.com. Prince Pharmacy has a 24-hour refill line, too. 
334-7292. Call before noon for same-day free delivery. They have a convenient drive through too, at Prince Pharmacy in the Southern Medical Group Clinic at 211 East Stadium in Magnolia. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, the experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. The nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. Hi folks, Jim Golden with Jim Golden, Ford Lincoln and Camden. Summer is passing and school is starting back and the team at Jim Golden is here for all of your automotive needs. We take care of your new and pre-owned vehicle needs as well as our quick lane maintenance center and our state-of-the-art service department. We are a family type business that cares about our customers. We are here to serve. We offer free pickup and delivery upon request for your service and maintenance needs as well as online shopping for your new and pre-owned vehicle purchases. Please come see us at Jim Golden, Ford Lincoln and Camden where the dealer makes the difference. Magnolia Cross it tonight on Don Hubbard Field at Panther Stadium. Welcome back to our Farmers Bank of Trust pregame show. Want to have a little outdoor fun this fall? Head to the South Arkansas Outdoor Social presented by the Farmers Bank Foundation on September 29th and 30th. Events include a fishing tournament at Lake Erling and free fishing derby and charitable trap shoot at SAU locations in Magnolia. All proceeds go to the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation. Call Candace at 235-7003. She'll be able to uh, to give you all the details. Panther team ready to come out. Yeah, they, we got the captains over on. Yeah, here we here come the Panther captains. Well, again, you know, this, this, it's not quite as hot as it was last week. It was, not, it was probably about 15 degrees cooler than it was last week. So we'll see how that plays into effect. Uh, you know, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but, but cramps have always played a factor in this game with uh, – with the two teams, especially, seems like it always affected Cross it more than Magnolia. Maybe they would have a few more guys going both ways, or or something like that. But um, we'll, we'll see if that has a, a bearing on on this on tonight's game. One of my apps says 83 degrees. The other says 79 right now. Last week it wasn't like 10. It was still over. 100. Yeah, it was still over 100 degrees. Heat, heat yeah. index was we over getting, 100. And that was like, and that was an so, eight o'clock start. So it's it's 20 degrees, uh, 20 plus degrees cooler than it was last week. Uh, people, people are going to think they need a jacket by the time this game's over. But you're, but that second, and I don't know what about the CrossFit game last week at Glen Rose. I'm sure they had some cramping too in a double overtime game. But uh, second half, we had quite a bit of cramping going on last week. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it goes here tonight. Second game, but again, a little bit of a little bit maybe lower humidity and uh, and the temperature down a little bit. Hopefully, we'll uh, make this a little better. We didn't have a whole lot of it. Last night, at least not on the mule rider side, we had a lot of it. Uh, well, I talked the, to uh, the athletic side. trainer after the game. I said, "Well, you you, you won the battle of the cramps." Said, "Oh, we had them, Jeff. We just hit them better." <laughs> so we we pulled our most of our we got ours over to the side because I don't I didn't see mule riders cramping up on the field. She said, "We well, they had they had a few that, but they were close to the sideline. They 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 were, but so yeah, it was yeah. There were some that kind of kind of snuck off. It looked yeah, like over right, on, over yeah. on the sideline, but uh, yeah, they did a great job. That's another another thing I think with. Yes, they used depth. They played a lot of personnel right. last night. Maybe that might have helped the cause as well. Right. Yeah. Right. I just missed the coin toss, but it looks like that Crossit has uh, won the toss. Won the toss. Trying to get them all lined yeah, up. Trying, okay. to, yep. trying to trying oh. to back them all up. Yep. And Crossit says we want the foot. Yep. Though. Okay. They're gonna they're gonna have the the Magnolia Panthers kicking off to them. Uh, Crossit will have their back to the. Uh, South end zone. South. Yep. South. That's right. <laughs> but my get bearings. Right. Yep. Get my bearings here. So we're just about ready for football. The teams will hit the field and we'll be ready for kickoff here at Panther Stadium. And wraps up our Farmers Bank and Trust pregame show. Stick around. Kickoff on the way. This is Panther Football. The Magnolia Family Medical Clinic is your hometown provider for all members of your family. The Magnolia Family Medical Clinic provides pediatric checkups with immunizations, adult wellness exams, illness recovery, patient education, and more. Nurse practitioners Joanne Clark and Christy Woost are here to serve your entire family. Call the Magnolia Family Medical Clinic today for an appointment. 870-235-5000. 
3555. Hey friends, it's Andy Sharp again at Bodcall Bank. The last time you heard from me, I invited everyone by our Magnolia Branch to experience banking the Bodcall way for yourselves. You guys did not disappoint. 2022 saw Bodcall Bank again continue to outpace the competition with record growth thanks to all of our patrons. I've been putting together a team that will continue to serve you well for what's ahead in 2023 and beyond. Come by our Magnolia location and you'll be sure to be greeted by my Self, Tom Sawyer, Rebecca Matthews, Candace Murray, Rachel Avery, Laney McMurtry, Leah Heflin, Jenny Marie Whitehead. Thanking the Bod Call Bank way. It's different. Come see for yourself. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. This year, we considered hiring an ad agency to help with our marketing. They pitched impressive visuals and a script that was inspiring. And exotic animal mascots to help grab your attention. In the end, we just decided to tell it to you straight. Shelter Insurance has award-winning customer service at affordable rates. Plus, our local agents are there to help you understand what coverage you need. For auto, home, life, or business insurance, see shelter agent Gary Don Farah. Magnolia Panther football tonight as they're taking on the Cross at Eagles here on Don Hubbard Field at Panther Stadium as we're just about ready to get this thing underway. The Cross at Eagles have taken the field again. They won the coin toss. They said they want the football. So uh, the Panthers will be kicking off. Raiden Sanchez will kick it off to uh, cross it. Looks like they have um, Bunton, Isaiah Bunton as the deep man. He's the guy we talked man. about. Yeah, he's the guy we talked about as the running back earlier. So they, they not a very big guy. He's a tiny mite back there. Five, listen to 5'8", 150. That may be stretching a little bit. It might be. He does not look very big, does no, he? But no. they say he's a he's an heck of an athlete. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think on one of the roster, yeah, he's listed as athlete on the roster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's the kickoff. It's short, near side, taken at the 16-yard line. Back across goes uh, Pascal, and Pascal, he does not have a chance to turn it upfield as he has hit just as he got to the middle of the field between the 15 and the 20-yard line. They're going to spot it around the 18 or 19, and that's where the Eagles will start this drive. Yeah, Chavis Johnson got down there, a couple other Panthers as well. So good coverage, and, and uh, Pascal tried to go across the field. That's normally not a very good ploy when you're, you know, returning the kickoff because it gives the coverage team time to get down there. So they'll start at the 19-yard line. The first and 10 for the cross at Eagles. Again, Max Brooks is the quarterback. Bunton, the running back, to his right. Twins right and left. Play action, throws out to the far side, hits Ellis Mays over there. Mays kind of angles toward the first down marker. Looks like he's going to be short of that where he went out of bounds. Ends up about at the 28-yard line out of bounds. That'll be a nine, about eight yards, actually, on that pass play. Well, that was just a, kind of a drag route over on the far side and just a short throw, but a good catch and run by the uh, – by Ellis Mays, knocked out of bounds by Mari Roach. Bring the receivers in tight now on both sides. Bring one in motion right to left. Now three bunched in tight on the left side. Hand off to the running back, running their direction. And he's not going to get much. He is not going to get the first down. I'm not sure he got much past the line of scrimmage, maybe a half a yard. He didn't get much. No. They're going to spot him right on the 28, which is where I had him anyway. Yeah, Vernon Tucker made a good play there and had some uh, good good penetration by the Panther defensive line. So third and short for the for the Eagles. Long yard. Brooks rolls out to the right side, and he throws on the run. He hits his receiver, Dermal Nalls, and that's going to be a first down as he gets it to the 33-yard line, a pickup of five. Malachi Ross making the tackle. That was just a quick, uh, almost uh, a West Coast offense-type play there where the quarterback just rolls out and hits a quick quick out pattern to the receiver and a first down for the Eagles. First and 10. They actually gave him a pretty good spot to the 34. Go to the pistol formation now. Handoff tailback. There ain't nothing doing as he tried to run it straight up the middle. But Ty Lee Biddle was there to uh, shut that down. That's going to be about a two-yard loss. Yeah, Biddle had good penetration right up right up the middle of the uh, you know, defensive front there. And he puts the hit on him and uh, loss of a couple. So, so far, a couple runs for Button and not much doing. Second down and 12 for the Eagles. Their 32-yard line. Brooks back to pass now, rolls out to the right side. Now he's in trouble, and he's going to be sacked unless he escapes. Nope, he's not going to. He, he showed some signs that he might get away, but then the swarm came on even stronger. He's dropped back around the 26-yard 
six or seven. What do you call that? Uh, he's going to be back at the 26. 26. 26. That'll be a six-yard loss. Yeah, it's going to be third and a, a long, long way to go. That was good. The Panther, Panther pass rush was good last week. Picks up where it left off last week. Brooks from the shotgun. It's third down now. And about 18. Rolling out left side is Brooks. He throws on the run. Threw it up into a crowd. That ball hit, hit the intended receiver in the hands, but there were a lot of Panthers around him and broke that up. That was Gavin Moore, the intended receiver. That pass incomplete, and it brings up fourth down in about 17. You had Braden Purefoy, Malachi Ross. There were several other Panthers there, too. So the quarterback, Brooks, was running to his left. He's a right-hander, and he, he couldn't get much on that throw. He just kind of, that was really up for grabs. So we'll punt it away. We watched this guy punting. Pre-game, he was, he was booting the nailing heck out of it. He was nailing it. Brandon Urbina, their punter, low snap to him, gets his punt away, and that one uh, bounces over toward the right side, but he gets a, a good roll, rolls out of bounds inside the 35. At the Panther end of the field out at the 33-yard line is where it's going to end up going out. That ended up 41 yards without a return. He punted them a little bit better in pregame as well. Yeah, I'm going to say that one. He didn't get much elevation on that one. Yeah. But he got a lot of roll to make up for it. First and 10 for the Panthers from their 33-yard line. Antonio Brooks is the quarterback for Magnolia and uh, Dakota Dismuke at the right slot. I believe that's Malvin Cross over at the left. Young's the fullback. Mar is out tonight, isn't he? Well, he was playing linebacker, so he may, may just see him okay. on defense. We'll see. Maybe so. Yeah, Jamie on Young, junior running back. He's in there at the fullback. They come around to the right side and got it off to Cross. Cross with a big a big run out across the 50 into Cross the territory down to the 41-yard line. That ends up being a 26-yard, 27-yard carry from Alvin Cross. Well, that's a pretty good way to start if you're the Panthers. Watson Belcher saved the touchdown. Looks like Cross might be able to take that one to uh, the house but good play for the Panthers first play from scrimmage for him. line up in a hurry Disney goes in motion now they're going to reset this uh, Disney will come back near side Jaquavius Ross the wide receiver Is that Bubba I think that's Bubba on the other side Bubba Williams first and 10 Magnolia left slot again in motion fake to the fullback quarterback Brooke keeps Brooks got spun around, tried to back his way forward, got as far as the 37, so he picked up three yards on the play. Well, last week, Spoochie averaged about 20-plus yards a carry. He only had a, about six carries for 120 Ooh, yards. Good spot, four yards. Yeah, he, yeah, he got a good spot. The chain gang didn't move it, but uh, football's in a good spot. So second down and about six here, judging by the football. Looking at the chain gang, it's second and seven. Panthers line up out of their flex bone offense, one wide to either side. Right slot, Dismuke in motion. And they'll go to the fullback this time. Young, he's got first down yardage before being turned back. He did get inside the 30, so forward progress going to pick up a first down. That'll be seven yards. Yeah, good good penetration by the uh, pair of offensive line. Hayden Harold, Terrence Biddle, Hagen Smelser, Kevion Smith, and Jaden Arbery doing a good job up front for the Panthers. First and 10, this drive continues. 8-10 to play in the opening quarter here at Panther Stadium tonight. Brooks up under center. Left slot in motion, going back to the fullback. This time kind of off tackle right side and got it down to about the 25. Picked up four yards on the play. Well, you heard Coach King in the pregame uh, talking about last week, Nashville had like 20 plays more than the Panthers, and he said that's not normally the M.O. The Panthers normally yeah. like this kind of drive right here that Coach King likes. Now, he'll take those one or two play long touchdown runs, but this this kind of drive that he likes. Second and six. And out there still at fullback with Brooks up under center. Left slot cross in motion. Goes back to the fullback, Jamie and Young. Comes to the near side, the right side of the line, and he'll get it as far as the 21-yard line. Four yards there. For Jamie Young Young, and he's coming off now, and Amari Roach is coming in at fullback now. Heard rumors that Roach may have a little, maybe a hamstring issue or something like that, but he's played defense and yeah. he's played offense, but he must be good he's to go. And Darius Waller came into the game as well. 
he's over there lined up at tight end on the left side. He is. He played some fullback last week. Back to the fullback. That's Amari Roach. Made one miss. Got forward progress. That's going to be a first down as he got it inside the 20. Down to about the 17-yard line. It'll be four yards for the fullback, Amari Roach. Good uh, good burst there by Amari Roach. As uh, came off the ball quick. Got to the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, just a split second, and uh, the defense didn't have any time to react. Able to get the first down rather easily. Keep that tight end out there, and Condarius Waller. Or, yeah, Condarius Waller. Looks like we got an off unbalanced line over to the left. Yeah, I'm gonna say they got yeah, a tight end. They got that up, tight end over there. Yeah. Lined up over right, there. Yep. No, no wide receiver on right. the left side. Yep. One on the right, and running it to the right of center over the right side. That's Amari uh, Roach, the fullback. Got it inside the 15 to the 14. Picked up about three yards that time. Heavy dose of the fullback on this drive. Uh, five carries for the two fullbacks. They've combined for 22 yards on those five carries. Second and seven. Back, just right back up the middle with the, uh, with the run. That was That's young. Young's back yep, in young, there now. Yep, yeah, I was yep. just said, I didn't think that was Amari. Yeah, Jamie and Young back at, at fullback. So he and he and Roach kind of swapping it out there on this opening drive for the Panthers. And now uh, he had gone out, but he's back out there, Condarius Waller. This time he sets up as a tight end on the right side. Third and six. Yeah, third and six for the Panthers. 14-yard line of the Eagles. Back to the fullback. That's Jamie on Young. Nothing doing, though, is... Uh, had a little hole momentarily right of center, but it closed up in a hurry. A little bit of yardage to about the 11-yard line. Well, ends up being about three. He uh, kind of hesitated when he hit the line there, and you can see Coach King on the sidelines, you know, demonstrative about getting that ball and getting in there in a hurry, getting quickly, quick through the line of scrimmage. And They're going Young, for it. Yeah, they are going for it. Young didn't, didn't quite, you know, hesitate. For the fullback slot, you really don't need to hesitate, and that's what Coach King was doing. Fourth down and three, but the Panthers will go for it here at the 11-yard line of the Eagles. We may have had a little motion there. I didn't see a flag, though. Quarterback keeping and nothing doing. That middle is plugged up, so the ball is going to go over to the Eagles on down. Yeah, I don't think uh, Antonio Brooks, um, I think he wanted to give the ball to fullback. He didn't. Then he realized, well, I'll just try to go in behind him, and by the time he did that, the hole is closed. So, And, and you, that, the play just looked a little off from the get-go, as you said, almost a little motion there. And, they, they just looked out of sync on that play. Lost the yard to the 12-yard line. And, again, the Eagles will take over now on downs. The half got our Magnet Regional Medical Center halftime show coming your way. Make sure you stick around with us for that. Quarterback Brooks out of the shotgun. And he hands it off to his tailback. Starts up the middle. Then Bunton cuts it out to the left side. He gets to the sideline. Across the 25 and out around the 30. And down at the 32-yard line after being tripped up. So that's a 20-yard run for Isaiah Bunt. Well, that's that's kind of what we heard about this Bunt guy, how, you know, his quick feet able to get out there. So he showed it that time. You're right. He is not very big. No, I, I but say he, he's an athlete. Like, it, like I said, that's what, it, that's what they classify him as on the, on the roster. Shift the slot from right to left. I'm going to hand off again to Bunton trying to get to the left edge, and uh, he's not going to do it. Panthers able to cut that off. I think George Jackson led that tackle there. Yeah, yeah Jackson got in there right from penetration. He had some tackles for losses last week. Another there, and he dropped that loss two yards back to the 30-yard line. Second down and 12 coming up here for the Eagles. 340 and counting in the first quarter. Panther Stadium, come on out. we got a long way to go in this one, folks. Come on out and enjoy some football at Panther Stadium tonight. It's a very pleasant night. No, very nice. Yep. We've got air conditioner on our backs. But <laughs> <laughs> quarterback Brooks rolls out to the right side on the run. He's going to throw it up into a crowd. Wow. And that is battered away. There were more Panthers there than there were Eagles. But uh, wise move there. You didn't be able to not think. Kamarian Burton, maybe the guy that got a hand on that. Yeah, there was knock it away. There was there was two Eagles and about five Panthers yeah. around that ball. So there was the odds were definitely in Magnolia's favor. He again he just uh he just yeah, he just put that one up for grabs. So it's third and twelve for the Eagles from their thirty yard line. Brooks 
No, he's not a very tall guy either. Look at Burton after he reached up there, and I think he might have been the guy who got a hand on that. He doesn't look very big. No. Back to pass is Brooks, and Brooks is in some trouble. Now he takes off, and he's going to be caught up with from behind. I think that's Tylee yep. Biddle that yep. caught him from behind and brought him down. He got back to the line of scrimmage. So fourth and 12 coming up here for the uh, Eagles, and they're going to have to punt it away. Well, the, the pr- practically, practically the whole you know, front four was in the backfield that time, and then there was nowhere for uh, for the quarterback, Max Brooks, to go. Mina comes on to punt. Magnolia has uh, Dakota Dismuke back deep. 235 left in the opening quarter here at Panther Stadium. Snap Urbina gets his punt away. Wobbler, and it's going to be taken by the actually the up guy at the 38 yard line. Bert, uh, yeah, Bert, oh. yeah, Kamari and Burton, and he gets to the near sideline and brought down right at about the 50 yard line. Well, that big guy, Larry Moore, is one of their offensive linemen. He's listed at six foot two ninety.
Panthers step in front. One of them gets a hand on it. Brayton Purifoy, LaMel Martin, one, I don't know which one of the two I got their hand on it. Purifoy, they got okay. his hand on it. They were both crisscrossing at the at the uh, back of the goal line. and One of them knocked it away, probably Purifoy, and it's going to be fourth and, and, yeah, fourth and seven. Looks like they're going to try a field goal. Ball's at the 16-yard line. This guy's got a, got a leg. He's the punter, too. I think he, I think yeah, he does. Yeah, he, well, he, 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 we saw him booting the ball in pregame. So this is going to be from the left hash mark. It'll be a 33-yard field goal attempt. The kick is away. Got plenty of distance, and it's through the upright. That's going to be a 33-yard field goal for the kicker, uh, Urbina, Brandon Urbina. Yeah. And it's a 12-10 ball game right now, 12-10 uh, Magnolia. With 743 second quarter, this is Panther football. What's better than a helping hand? How about one you can actually shake? At Farm Bureau Insurance, that's exactly what you get. There's a local agent like me in every county, and we're passionate about helping our local communities thrive. For me, it's more than a job. It's a calling. I'm Stephen Zorsch. Call me at 234-1966 for an auto, home, or life insurance quote and learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. That's Stephen Zorsch at 234-1966. Exciting game going on here between the Panthers and the Eagles. They're going to put up a pop-up kick to the far side of the field. Taken at the 25-yard line, and uh, must have been out of bounds. No, he, he threw his hand up. Oh, did he call fair catch? He threw okay. his hand up. I don't think Malvin he crossed yeah. the return man. I don't think he wanted to. <laughs> Just kinda... Or he meant to. Let me, he, he, he didn't mean to. Let me put it that way. But he did. So that meant the play was dead. So... Because uh, he had room to run, he knew it, but uh, probably just a, a force of habit to throw that hand up there. So Panthers will have the football at their 25-yard line to start this drive. 7.40 remains in the second quarter. Magnolia's lead is now at two. You know who my new favorite team is, Dan? Madison Richland of Mississippi. You know why? No, they're beating PA 21 to 10. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh-oh, fumbled snap. Trying to come to the near side is uh, Smoochie, but Smoochie yep. ends up, uh, I think he should have just jumped on it. He's going to end up getting backed up all the way back to the 14-yard line. He's going to end up being an 11-yard loss on the play. Smoochie's having a conversation with his center, Hagen Smelser, and I think they were not on the same page in the hymn book there as uh, the, the snap came back there. So they were, Smoochie was having a conversation with him, and They'll get that straightened out. So, second and about 21 for the uh, for the Panthers. Ball all the way back at the 14. Play comes in. Check that wristband. Panthers ready to go. Looks under center. He's gonna he's gonna throw it. Now he's chased out of the pocket. Comes to the near side. He's gonna tuck it and run. Gets to the ooh, almost got to the sideline. But caught up with, just as he was trying to turn it upfield, caught up with by their middle linebacker, Max Taunton, who brought him down. Still got some of that back as he got it out to the 23. That's a gain of nine. Yeah, Taunton uh, got a lot of speed there in that middle linebacker position because we know how fast Antonio Brooks is. And looked like Brooks was going to be able to get to the corner, but Taunton able to cut him off. So now third and long for the Panthers. Third and long 12, I think. Third and long 12, yeah. Mari Roaches, the fullback. Dismuke, the right slot. Can't see the number on the left slot. Right slot, Dismuke in motion. Going to handle That's Cross, Malvin Cross, because he came around, took the handoff, and he gets it only to the 25. Only about two yards there for Malvin Cross. So uh, basically got back to that original line of scrimmage before the line. Actually didn't do quite do that. Only going to give him a yard to the 24. Back then he tried to counter play there, which we haven't seen that very often. Cross started out on the left and went. To the right is he, he did a counter with the other running back, and Crossing was not fooled by it, and they, they make the hit. So Sanchez is going to have to come in and put, uh, punt the football away. That's it. Hopefully he won't, but could get pretty good field position here. Well, the snap has bounced back to Sanchez, comes up with it. It's going to bounce and takes just a little bit of a panther roll. It'll roll dead at the 43-yard line of the Crossing Eagles. Things up going... 33 yards without a return. Well, they have a different punter than they do. That was uh, McElroy punting, I think, number nine. 
And um, Urbina has been the kicker, so they, it is, it's not the same guy. Okay. That might have been Urbina we saw booming him down in the end zone. <laughs> it might have been. Yeah, I'm not sure. A different guy. But uh, anyway, because they didn't have a jersey on at the time. So, Crossed football from their 43-yard line. Pretty good field position after that uh, 33-yard punt from Sanchez. And it's uh, 541 to play second quarter, 12-10 Magnolia. Max Brooks, oh, he was hit. He pumped a couple of times. Now the ball came loose. Looks like Cross had got on top of it. Let's see if they're going to call that a fumble. And I think yeah. they are. Back to about the 28-yard line where they finally get on top of it. And one of their offensive linemen is shaking up. Tyler Biddle was the one putting the hit on the quarterback. And we got a timeout, I think. Larry Morris was the big guy that was on the ground, but he got back up, one of their offensive linemen. He's going to head to the sideline. I think we've got a timeout. Is that a water break? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see. They didn't signify a timeout for either team. So, Well, at the, at the half, we need to yeah. do this anyway. Right. Every game we spotlight a Panther. Join us at halftime for our Bide Call Bank Panther Spotlight. Highlight a different Panther athlete each game on our Bide Call Bank Panther Spotlight. Bide Call Bank, local bank, local people. Bring you all the uh, stats of the first half also. At halftime on our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show. Injuries, surgeries, and many illnesses often require physical therapy as part of the healing process at the MRMC Physical Therapy Center. They specialize in getting you back on your feet and into your normal routine. Ask your health care provider about your physical therapy needs and ask for the MRMC Physical Therapy Center. Yeah, Brooks, they, I don't, Brooks, they took a pretty good hit. But uh, I don't. But they took a timeout off Crossit, so I guess Crossit did call a timeout. Max Brooks is still out there. They may call a timeout, so they didn't have to take Brooks out that, of the game. That might have been. He he's tried to scoot left. Now threw it up. No Panther got a hand on it. It's tipped in the hands of another Panther as he uh, runs it back up the middle. We got a flag that goes down down around the 25 yard line on that interception return. Dakota, I thought that was Dakota. Yeah, Dakota, yeah, yep. Dakota Dismuke back there in the secondary with that interception after it was dipped. Well, the, the uh, penalty is a holding call against the uh, Eagles before the pass was made. And so Dakota Dismuke, it was tipped. And uh, D- Dismuke, the old tip drill, comes down with it and makes a pretty nice return. Uh, close to 25 yards down inside the 25 and about the 24. Yeah, 24-yard line, first down and 10 for the Magnolia Panthers. So a big interception there. And the return, a good return by Dakota Disney. 5.07 to play in the second quarter. Magnolia hoping to add to their two-point advantage over Crossett. And now, what do we got? Oh, well, we got whistles. Crossett's called another timeout. So, timeout taken by the Eagles. And the teams will head to the sideline. We'll take it with them this time. This is Panther football. <laughs> Hey guys, Lucas Cheatham back to remind you about HealthQuest Therapy 1515 East Main and Magnolia. As we fall back into hunting, bonfires, rodeos, and cheering on our favorite teams under the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night lights, remember my mom, Christy, and her team have the right playbook to get you back on track. They offer one-on-one care, dry needling, hand and speech therapy, physical therapy, and more. Chosen by our local athletes and the right choice for you. It's HealthQuest Therapy. Visit healthquesttherapy.net. It'll be Panther football at the 24-yard line of the uh, Crossed Eagles. 507 second quarter. Again, next week and off week, going to win the following week into Texarkana before playing at home again. Going to be a while before another right. home game. Yep. And off goes to the fullback. Um, he was he was hit. Spun around. That's Jamie on Young. And uh, Young got as far as the 23-yard line. Only picked up a buddy, buddy, about two. That uh, middle linebacker we talked about earlier, Max Thompson, he, he filled that gap there and had a hold of him. So just a couple yards for Damian Young. Plenty of time for the Panthers to add on to this 12-10 lead, 440 and counting here in the second quarter. So Coach King was talking about J2, and I said, J2? Yeah. Oh, and I said, oh, yeah, J2. There yeah, he is. There you okay. Go. okay. Damian Damian Young. I wonder where they got the J2 at. Left slot now. Brooks is going to keep it. Smoochie spins off of the tackle, tried to spin off of another. Falls forward. He's down to about the 15-yard line. Good run 
by Antonio Brook to the 15, picks up eight yards. He may take a minute to gather his wits, or he may be dizzy after all that spinning he did there because he, he made about three spins and uh, picked up pretty good yardage. A third and a yard. He was trying to pick up that first down. Third and a yard coming up here for Magnolia. To the fullback. Right slide Pascal in motion. Quarterback's going to keep. Runs over the left side, and he's gone. It's Smoochie going to the house for a touchdown. That's 15 yards for Antonio Brooks. Touchdown, Magnolia. Well, he followed his fullback. He, he faked it in there to Young, and he just followed him, and nobody touched Smoochie. He takes then 15 yards for the touchdown, and the uh, Panthers up by eight now, 18 to 10 with the extra points come. He started his run on this side, and then I had to shift to the other side. Yeah, the pole. That's right. <laughs> we, need, we need to cut that pole out. Of course, then the roof would fall in on this. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be good either. Braden Sanchez on for the extra point. And a bad, well, the, the snap was high, and the holder, Walker Carter, tried to get it down, but couldn't. The ball came loose. Just never really got a good handle on it since the snap was high. And Mag Magnolia, that's third time in this game that they come away with no points after the touchdown. It's 18-10 to 10 Magnolia with 353 in the second quarter. This is Panther football. It's mighty hard to resist an odor of Domino's Loaded Tots. You have your choice of three different mouth-watering toppings. There's Domino's Cheddar Bacon Loaded Tots with a perfect combo of gooey cheese and crisp bacon. Or how about Domino's Philly Cheesesteak Loaded Tots? Or last but not least, Domino's Melty Three Cheese Loaded Tots covered with a blend of mozzarella, cheddar, and provolone cheese. Plus Alfredo sauce. Add some Loaded Tots to your next Domino's order. Order online or on the Domino's app and earn piece of the pie rewards. Hopefully, before the night is over, we'll make an extra get point. Some, point, some points after it. Yeah, we were pretty pretty solid last week on our extra point kicking, but a uh, little, little struggle bus tonight. Three plays, took a minute, 14, 24 yards on that drive for Magnet. Kick off near side. Seems like everywhere they kick, if Bunton is there, and Bunton gets back to the middle of the field, and is going to be brought down shy of the 30-yard line out in the middle of the field. Chavis Johnson made a good open field tackle that time on Button as if Button had a head of steam, and he's one guy you don't want to get ahead of steam, and, and Johnson did a good job. So Panthers leading 18-10, to 10, 347. I would I would think Cross is probably going to put the ball there. They have not had hardly any success rushing the football. They are at uh, eight yards net rushing here in the first half, 102 yards passing. First down and 10 for the Eagles. 29-yard line of cross the twins right and left with Max Brooks out of the shotgun. Yeah, we got Brooks on both sides as quarterback, and we got flags with the snap. Max Brooks, the quarterback for cross it, Antonio Brooks for Magnolia. It's going to back cross it up five yards back to the 24-yard line. Third penalty game on the Eagles, three for 20 yards, and that little little issue here. The all three penalties have happened in the last couple of drives. Three minutes, 45 seconds to play in the second quarter. Got our uh, Botcall Bank Panther spot. I'd come up for you at halftime. Be with us for that. But man, they had a couple of men in extra one in the backfield. He moved over to the right slot. Rolling out that way is Brooks. And now Brooks throws on the run into a crowd. That ball's battered up. It ends up going out of bounds into the Panther sideline. I'm not sure that didn't hit, uh, yeah, Burton. Mario Arn Burton in the head. Looked like a soccer player trying to hit one in the goalie. Yeah, there was, again, he threw it to a crowd. Brooks, is, he's thrown several balls up for grabs in this game. Yeah, he's he's fortunate to have only had one intercepted yep, so right. far. You are correct. And that, like I said, that hit Mario Arn Burton in the, in the top of the head. It's, it's, it was just a mass of humanity there. Ethan McCloy. Quick's going to move out to the left if the, side. Uh, if the Panthers get a quick stop here, the Magnolia might have, might have time to put something on the board before the half goes up. Uh, You're right. Max Brooks out of the shotgun, a low snap, but we got whistles again. Crossett just burned their last timeout. Timeout Crossett, 322 left. Second quarter. Magnolia leads 18-10. to 10. This is Panther football. 
KVMZ FM Waldo Magnolia and KELD FM Hampton Camden El Dorado 99.1 and 106.5 The new Max FM Short term plans may change but stay focused on three lifetime goals planning for retirement, preparing for the unexpected getting in a in touch with one of Magnolia's Edward Jones financial advisors, Edward Jones member SIPC Okay. I was going to say, uh, Magnolia leading 18 to 10 here, but Hot Springs Lakeside may be for real this year, Dan. They're leading Russellville, uh, which is a big day school, I think. Yeah, for uh, sure. 24 to 12 at halftime. So uh, we'll, we'll see Lakeside. I was curious how there. that matchup was going to go tonight. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting score when yeah. that's over. Right. Max Brooks takes a low snap. Now he's going to try to run for it. Now he cuts it out to the right side. He's got one on his heels, but he was able to slip it. Now cuts back, but he dropped the football, and the Panthers will have it. At the 30-yard line of Crossit. I think Kevin Carter may have caused the fumble. And Tylee Biddle, number 58, falls on it. So give Carter the strip and Biddle the recovery. Brooks was uh he was uh he was a hard one to catch there, but when the Panthers finally got their hands on him, they forced a fumble and Magnolia's in really good shape here. It just looked like he dropped the loaf of bread. There. Yeah, it sure <laughs> did. It did. <laughs> he made, a, made a cut. Panthers have yeah, now they've got yeah, they got Time to try to get it in the end zone. Three timeouts remaining, 3-11 on the clock at the 31-yard line of Crossit. And Moochie's back to pass. He's going to throw it up near side, running a streak up the near sideline. as such cross, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I think he was actually, thrown a little bit. I don't think he was running on the right side of the uh, out-of-bounds line. I think he was, I think he was he, out. He was out the whole way. He got, he got a little... Uh, That's about the time I was switching. Yeah, yeah. He, the about the time he got to about the... 18-yard line, he went out of bounds and just stayed out of bounds. So even if he'd have caught it, it would have been uh, no good. Maybe if I stand up, I can see around this pole right. better on that left side. 3.06 to play in this second quarter. 18-10, to 10, Magnolia left slot back, cross in motion. Hands off goes to the fullback, that's Jamie on Young, and he's going to get it down around the 26 or 7. The spot looks like. 26 will call it, so five yards. He'll play any time for Magnolia. 248. Stopped it too well. Stopped momentarily at 245, then restarted. All those missed extra points. Panthers would love to get another score on the board. Only leading by eight right now, 18 to 10. 230 now to snap. And off to the fullback, and he cuts it out to the left side, jumps over top of one. Here he goes down the near sideline. That's Jamie on Young, and he's pushed out from behind inside the five, going to be around the two or three yard line where he went out of bounds. Blake Buford saved the touchdown, gave him a shove, but at the three yard line, and uh, 23 good, yards. 23 yards for Jamie on Young, and that puts him at 50 yards in the half, and the Panthers knocking on the. Uh, Goal line doorstep here. Two minutes, 24 seconds remains in the half. Buck stopped as he was pushed out of bounds. Tony Brooks up under center. Right slot back comes in motion, and Brooks keeps it and got a, got a, got a falling forward there. Looked like he fumbled, juggled the snap a little bit when it came into his arms, and uh, he just kind of went with it forward. He didn't have time to get the fake to the fullback because our hand, you know, because he, he didn't have control of the ball, no gain on the play. But, uh, yeah, you're right. He, there was something amiss about that play. Yeah. Yeah, going to stay right at the three-yard line. He might have got the length of the football. That would be about all. So, second down and goal coming up here for the Panthers. Brooks ready once again. Brings his right slot in motion. They'll go to the fullback this time over the left side. Going on in. Touchdown. Jamie on Young with a three-yard carry. Touchdown, Magnolia. That's the ninth carry of the game for Jamie on Young. 53 yards and those three for a touchdown. And Magnolia on top 24-10 to 10 now. And we're going to try this extra point thing again. I say, all right, yeah, let's just, let's just go back to Back to where we're supposed to be. 25, 15 point advantage would be not enough. That one's blocked too. I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is with the extra points tonight, but after being almost perfect last week, not not tonight. No, nope, not that was another 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 block there. 24 10 Magnolia with a minute 42 in the second quarter. This is Panther football. 
Celebrate summer with a great CD rate from People's Bank. We're offering a CD rate of 5.01% annual percentage yield for 10 months. Minimum balance is $1,000. This offer is effective and APY is accurate from June 1st, 2023 and is subject to change at any time. Come see us today at People's Bank. Substantial penalty for early withdrawal. See Bank for details. Member FDIC. Panthers on five plays, covered 30 yards, took just a minute 28. Got it into the end zone, but again, no no extra points. So. Yeah, let's hope those let's four extra points. Let's hope those four extra points don't come back to be a factor in this game. 14-point game right now. Kickoff, short kickoff, fair catch is called this time. Well, at least they, well, they kicked they, it even shorter because they kicked it away from Butt. Man, Button was coming up to get that one, but uh, he kicked it short enough where he couldn't get up there, and it was fair caught. One of their wide receivers yeah, Kate, was there, McCloy. Yeah, yeah, Kate McCloy. So, cross it with only a minute 41 to go down by 14, 24 to 10. No timeouts. Yeah, no timeouts. Uh, they, they may, like, uh, let's, let's don't do anything crazy here. and let's, let's get this thing in the locker room and regroup. But we'll see. Hey, yeah, you know, with missed extra points, it's just uh, you know, two touchdown. Yeah, Two-score game separation. Yep. Rook hands off to his step back bunt, and he was hit, but able to slip it out to the left side, but not going to be able to turn it upfield as he's going to be brought down. Panthers kept a close side, didn't get much, maybe about a yard there for Tevis, Button. That's going to be all. Tevis Johnson with another tackle. He's had he's had a lot of tackles tonight for the Panthers. So, yeah, man, I think if, if Button can break one, the Eagles will say, ah, we'll take that. Otherwise, they're, they're just going to run the clock out. Second and nine, minute 12 and counting. Brooks rolls out right side, throws it on the run. He hits his receiver on the near side. He's tripped up, does not get out of bounds. That's Jermel Knowles with the uh, with the reception. And it's going to be oh, They're going to say yeah, they move the chain. Yeah, well, we ain't going to measure. We don't need. Measure. Got it to the forty-four yard line, a gain of ten. Pretty pretty safe pass there, almost like a just a, a you know the West Coast offense type play where they just roll out and make a short pass and picks 50, up ten yards. Fifty seconds. Move button from right to left of the quarterback. Now he fakes the handoff, throws out left side. He threw it behind his receiver. That was Knowles, I think, again over there. And that one came in behind him. That was a dangerous Oh, pass. that was very dangerous. Malachi Ross was over there for the Panthers. And if that ball would have hung up just a little bit longer, Malachi would have been off to the races for the Panthers. Might be why he threw it behind him because it looked like Malachi was going to maybe catch it if yeah. he had thrown it out where he should have thrown right, it. Right, right. 39.5 left in the half. 24-10 Magnolia. Max Brooks out of the shotgun. Backs up. He wants to throw. He does. Penalty flag flies back there. That one's picked off at the 30-yard line of Magnolia. Now it's lateraled off. Coming across the 45, near side to the 50, into crossed territory. That was uh, Barton uh, intercepted. Purifoy ends up with it. Took yeah. it on the lateral. Yeah, Kamarion Burton intercepted, and as he was going down, he flipped it to Purifoy. There's going to be a holding penalty against the Eagles. There go Panthers will decline that, and Magnolia will have 25 seconds uh, inside Eagle territory. Yeah, let's see what Magnolia wants to do here. Heads up play by uh, Burton to flip that ball to uh, Purifoy, and Purifoy picked up about 25 or 30 yards after the return. So the ball's at the 41-yard line of the Eagles. First and 10, Magnolia. 25.2 seconds left. they got all three timeouts left. So, what the Panthers elect to do here. I right, like coming you. in from the sideline. Check those wristbands. See what kind of arm smooch he has here. Antonio up under center. And he tosses it as they brought the man in motion from the right slot. And he's going to end up going out of bounds. That's Pascal. He got, uh, got pretty good yardage to the 35-yard line. Picked up six. And then... The hit was coming, so stop the clock while well, they mark him out at the 36. That's the Cody, number three? Or, no, who did I say it was? It was yeah, it was D Dismuke. I'm yeah, sorry. Dakota, yeah. yeah, we don't have a pass call, do we? You had me confused there. Yeah. It doesn't think, well, take much to do. Doesn't take much for me. To, <laughs> you figured out? I got it. Six yards? Well, it looks like six on the, on the uh, chain gang over there, but it was only five for my previous spot. 
21 seconds left in the half. Brooks back to pass. He throws it up, and uh, I think a little confusion there. Dismuke stopped his route, and then uh, the ball sailed long. Yeah, Dismuke came down and ran a little curl route, and um, Bucci threw an out route or out and up. And, uh, so, yeah, just a little confusion. But with 17 seconds, that's pretty much what you got to do there, try to make something happen with the passing game. Yeah, just hope he can run under it. Yep. So, uh, 17, you know, 17.2 seconds, 24-10 Magnolia, third down. And about four. Right slot back comes in motion. Brooks is going to follow his fullback. Now tried to slip left. Now cuts back right. Well, there's a massive cross at humanity there in the middle, and he's going to be stopped at the 30. I think he got a first six down. Yards. Uh, yeah, he did. He got a first down. They'll move the chains. Timeout, Magnolia. So six yards. That'll only be the first timeout for the Panthers. 9.7 seconds left on the clock. Every game with Spotlight a Panther. Join us in just a little bit at halftime for our Vodka Bank Panthers Spotlight. Uh, it's uh, oh, I will give you a clue. It's someone who is very familiar to to the Magnolia area. We've called his time name a time or two tonight. We do his brother played last night. Highlight a different Panther athlete each game on our Vodka Bank Panther Spotlight. Vodka Bank local bank. Local people. His brother. His brother's playing tonight too. That pretty much gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it narrows it down to two. <laughs> yeah, I think we did. <laughs> Nine point seven seconds left in the first half. We'll give some scores at halftime too. Twenty four ten Magnolia. Damian Young, the fullback, in behind the quarterback, Antonio Brooks. Brooks backs Ooh, open. up to pass. He throws it over the middle. He's got an open man, and it was a little underthrown. Tried to come back for it, but it bounces in, and he, the defender may have got a piece of it. Oh, he was open, too. He just didn't have enough oomph on it. He tried to hurry it as uh, he Malvin Cross was running a, 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 just a streak down the middle of the field from his right slot back position. Actually, got looked like he got Malvin. Actually, um, he's over on the left slot, and and boy, he was open. Five seconds left. So they can take another shot. They got time for one more. Second down and ten. Thirty-one yard line of the Eagles. Baby. Left slide cross comes in motion. He takes the toss sweep right, and flags flying. We, looks like we had some movement. False start on the Panthers. Going to back him up five. Back to the 36-yard line. More room to maneuver. If they put some time back on the clock, they should. Yeah, it took about half of the five seconds. They should, they should put it back to five, but yeah, it should. Well, I don't think it matters. It's going to be the last play anyway. They're going. They, they had a couple. They they, they talked. Yeah, I think they're going to. I think. Yeah, he's trade's going to try to tell them to. Should be five put, seconds, Scott. Yeah, they'll put put time back on on the clock. Those Kings out there talking to him. We got it. They'll have to let him. He'll send it up with their walkie-talkie two-way, and uh, I assume. What's the problem here? Or maybe Coach King is asking for the time and not getting in there. But they may just be calling a timeout. Are they saying that's the last? They're saying the play in the play. The half is over. I think so. They're sending everybody to the locker room. We could have called a timeout. Well, we still had time on the clock. There's an incomplete pass. I think the official may be ruled that uh, that, the, that the that the home team clock operator might have stopped. Well, the clock. There was an incomplete know. pass. Yeah. And so that was five seconds. There was a penalty, which was a dead ball penalty. So the, I don't know. That maybe I don't know. Yeah, we were at five seconds. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, maybe there's some there. rule if you have an offensive penalty the under. Two minutes, the uh, clock runs 10 seconds or something. But uh, you see, you call it time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it, they're sending them to the locker room. Yep. So that brings us to half. Magnolia leads 24-10 to 10 at half over the cross at Eagles. Got our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show coming up. This is Panther Football. Bailey's Body Shop is your one-stop shop for collision repair. They can do it all from handling the estimate for you to getting the information to your insurance company. Owner Danny Bailey has been doing auto body work for over 40 years, and Bailey Body Shop is built on quality and trust. You don't have to worry about it. They're there when you need them. When you need collision repair, trust Bailey's Body Shop 
2416 North Vine in Magnolia, 234-3303. Hey, Bobo, you got any good truck driving stories? No, not really. That's funny. I heard that one time you took a wrong turn and ended up on one headed straight to Chicago O'Hare International Airport. Is that so? They said the pilot at 747 Jet had never been pilot eye with an 18-wheeler before, and he still hadn't been sane. Just who have you been talking to? <laughs> Nobody. For all your long-haul needs, call Bobo's Trucking at 870-234-2803. Now equipped with navigation assistance. Recalculating. Magnolia Travel Center is the only homegrown fuel stop in Magnolia and offers premium non-ethanol gas, great for ATVs, boats, lawnmowers, and other small engines. They also offer off-road diesel. These fueling options are offered at your convenience, night or day, seven days a week, and are located on the last two fueling bays in the back of the store. Endless breakfast options, daily lunch specials, the Flavor Shot Fountain Center, salads, pizzas, and more. Lower prices with a local feel. It's Magnolia Travel Center. Full menus available on Magnolia travelcenter.com with chambliss and davis family practice you can look and feel your best cheering on your favorite team chambliss and davis see patients of all ages from newborn to elderly they do primary care weight loss management dot physicals cool scoping biot hormone physicals and more they're open monday through thursdays from eight till four and fridays eight till noon the office of chambliss and davis is accepting new patient applications with most insurances accepted including united Healthcare. doctors chambliss and davis where your primary care is their primary concern. Hey friends, it's Andy Sharp again at Bodcall Bank. The last time you heard from me, I invited everyone by our Magnolia branch and experience banking the Bodcall way for yourselves. You guys did not disappoint. 2022 saw Bodcall Bank again continue to outpace the competition with record growth thanks to all of our patrons. I've been putting together a team that will continue to serve you well for what's ahead in 2023 and beyond. Come by our Magnolia location and you'll be sure to be greeted by myself, Tom Sawyer, Rebecca Matthews, Candace Murray, Rachel Avery, Laney McMurtry, Leah Heflin, and Jenny Marie Whitehead. Banking the Bodcall Bank way. It's different. Come see for yourself. Equal housing lender, member FDI. I see. Welcome back for our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show. Do you always feel tired and exhausted? Even after a night of sleep, you may suffer from a variety of common sleep disorders. The Magnolia Regional Medical Center Sleep Lab can diagnose disorders and get you on your way to a full night's rest. Ask your health care provider about a sleep study at Magnolia Regional Medical Center. Tired and exhausted. This is our second night in a row, Jeff, having to go up and down the, the stairs. The sta- yeah, I told Chris Gillum, I think box. the press box got moved up this year. I think it's a little bit higher than it was last year. I think it gets moved up higher every year. Yeah, you need to make the trip with us with SAU next week to East Central. That's the highest press box in the great American. Well, I don't know if it's higher than going to the press box at Oklahoma Baptist and then climbing up the ladder to the roof <laughs> of the press box or not, but... Yeah. Uh, but as far as uh, traditional uh, press box up the bleachers to the press box, it's a long way there at uh, at uh, East Central University over over in Indiana. Not as high as Delta State's. No, I've never been. been You've probably been at Delta. State. I have. Yeah, that is press way up there. That's a killer over there. I don't know. I I have, I don't know. If, I don't think Matt is still over there anymore. Uh, or I think I maybe a little bit, but uh, they they should have put a. Put, a, put an, an elevator in, in in that one a long time ago. Oh, anyway, <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. It is. How, how you doing on? I'm ready. Talk? I'm ready to go. I was just writing some scores down here. So, uh, all right. So, um, stats in the first half for the uh, Magnolia Panthers: 23 rushes, 124 yards. Say that again. I'm sorry. 23 for 124. Did you tell them this was the Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show? Yes, I did. Okay, all right. I missed that. I was writing. 23 for 124. Uh, Passing for Magnolia, one out of four, no interceptions, 43 yards. Total offense. 43. Yeah, 43. Total offense, 27 plays, 167 yards for the Panthers. Magnolia had seven first downs, three penalties for 15 yards. Cross at Eagles, they only had 17 yards rushing in the first half on 15 total carries. So 15 carries for 17 yards, had a lot of negative plays. Uh, passing six out of, can't read my writing, six out of 12, two interceptions, 112 yards. Total plays was 32 for 129 yards for the Eagles. Six penalties, I mean, I'm sorry, six first downs, three penalties for 20 yards for the Eagles. And, of course, our halftime score, 24-10 Magnolia. Uh, leading individual 
rusher in the first half for the Panthers, Jamie Yon Young. He had nine carries for 53 yards. So, you know, biggest, of course, Panthers Panthers were able to get it, get the ball into the end zone four times to uh, just two for cross it in that first half. But the, the big deal there is the just no points after touchdowns. No, they, yeah, four uh, missed extra points, three on, uh, uh, one, two block, one uh, snap right, that was, point, yeah, yeah, was that, that handled, then a two point conversion attempt that was not successful. So, 0 for four on conversion attempts are. You know, as it is, it's just a two-score game. Now, Magnus' defense played really well, giving up uh, one big play uh, on offense. That was the long touchdown pass that Cross had completed uh, to, uh, from Brooks to Packle. And uh, other than that, Panthers have done really, really well on defense. So that's probably one thing they're covering in, uh, in the locker room, trying to get things squared away on their extra point kicks. Yeah. But, uh, but maybe also uh, when they're – Kicking the football off, okay, wherever uh, wherever that running back is, yeah. kick Isaiah it somewhere Button. else. Yeah, don't, <laughs> kick it, don't kick it to uh, yeah. don't kick it to Isaiah Button. He's he gets ahead of steam. He's he's tough to stop. Absolutely. So Magnolia, once again, twenty four ten over the Cross at Eagles. It's halftime here on uh, Friday night at Panther Stadium. Back with more on our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show after this. This is Panther football. No, it's nice. You could drive to Waterburger right now. If you wanted to. Yeah, you could hang a Louie, talk to Reggie at the counter, and get a freshly made 100% beef double meat Whataburger with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies on a 5-inch bun. It's just the delicious freedom you have living in the land where there's Whataburger. Of course, some people aren't in that land. wonder what they're doing right now. Probably thinking about a road trip. Whataburger. Just like you like it. Hi folks, Jim Golden with Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. Summer is passing and school is starting back and the team at Jim Golden is here for all of your automotive needs. We take care of your new and pre-owned vehicle needs as well as our quick lane maintenance center and our state-of-the-art service department. We are a family-type business that cares about our customers. We are here to serve. We offer free pickup and delivery upon request for your service and maintenance needs as well as online shopping for your new and pre-owned vehicle purchases. Please come see us at Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden where the dealer makes the difference. Bailey's Body Shop is your one-stop shop for collision repair. They can do it all, from handling the estimate for you to getting the information to your insurance company. Owner Danny Bailey has been doing auto body work for over 40 years, and Bailey Body Shop is built on quality and trust. You don't have to worry about it. They're there when you need them. When you need collision repair, trust Bailey's Body Shop, 2416 North Vine in Magnolia, 234-3303. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. For a free personal protection review, contact Shelter Insurance agent Gary Don Farah. Monty Harrington here, Market President at Farmers Bank and Trust. I've got exciting news for Columbia County. We're constructing a new full-service branch at our Arkla location in Welcome. We're also investing in a new My Farmers Eye Teller ITM in Taylor. These two locations will add even more coverage for our hometown customers. Farmers Bank is committed to making your life easier, no matter what season of life you're in. So be on the lookout and stop by any Farmers Bank location, because to us, your family, Farmers Bank and Trust, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. The annual membership drive at Columbia County Ambulance Service is now underway. Help protect your finances by purchasing an individual or family membership. Annual family memberships are $60 per year and individual memberships are only $40 per year. If you purchase one before November 15th, you can save $5. You can stop by the office at 218 South Pine in Magnolia, call the office and pay over the phone, or purchase on our website, ColumbiaCountyAmbulance.com. Welcome back on our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show. Magnolia Family Medical Clinic's your full-service health care provider for all members of your family, ages birth through end of life. They accept patients by walk-in or with an appointment. Give them a call at 235-35255. Panther Marching Band is uh, 
entertaining the crowd out there right now. As we move along, it's time for our uh, Panther Spotlight, brought to you by Bodkall Bank, 2125 North Jackson in Magnolia. Also locations in Stamps and Texarkana. They're 307 Thomas Street in Stamps and 3625 Richmond Road in Texarkana. Bodkall Bank has been serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Local bank, local people enjoy the benefits of hometown banking at Bodcom Bank. I'm going to have to give me a cough crap. I'm starting uh, to, you get, my, you, my you start to get a little, I need to get, read that for you? Get a little, get a little uh, scratchy here. Uh, right, we, about, we pretty much gave it away earlier. Talk, we? Start talking about Bodcom Bank and Zach. You just get all get all choked up thinking about it. That's right. <laughs> Thinking about not Coach Sharp, a, not, uh, yeah, not getting a speeding ticket on the way to Monticello. Coach Sharp's gonna gonna spend a little time with me uh, over over at the, over at the the table uh, and that's during uh, during basketball season uh, for the SAU home game. Well, actually, I think for all of the SAU games, he's gonna gonna bring us the keys to the game, and I think at the home games, he's gonna hang around with me there. And uh, I don't think I've ever had a color commentator during a basketball other than you when you when you went along with me on yeah, some road trips. Right. So, uh, He'll probably know a little bit more we'll about see, it. We'll see. I might have to tell him to shut up a couple of times. You just never know. That's right. But, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, it's time for our Bot Call Bank uh, Panther Spotlight. And our Panther in the spotlight tonight is Amari Roach, uh, daughter of Audrey and Carrie Roach. He participates in basketball, football, and track. Favorite teacher, Mr. Dunn. Uh, on campus clubs, the, he's in the chamber choir. Off campus, uh, he uh, he's involved in church. Also worked for Mr. Dunn, and after high school, Amari Roach and, uh, plans to attend UCA. So Amari Roach again in our Bodcall Bank Panther Spotlight, brought to you by Bodcall Bank, serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Hey, what? We got some scores we'll pass along. Uh, you want to do that now? You yeah, let's go, ahead. let's go ahead and do that now, and then okay. we'll take one final break for the second half. I got uh, Warren and Whitehall tied 13-13 at half. But last night, Hot Springs defeat, defeated Arkadelphia 24-7. Got Lakeside. We told you that earlier. They're, they're up on Russell 24-12. I think that's in the third quarter now. Uh, Ashdown leading DeQueen 27 to nothing at half. And uh, Nashville, who the Panthers played last week, only up on Hope 14-7 to in the second quarter. Uh, McGee, 26, Watson Chapel, 8. Got Monticello, 14, Boxite, 10 at the half. And uh, Joe T. Robinson leading four cities, 17 to 8 at the half. I bet it's a little warmer at Robinson tonight than it was the last time we were there. Ooh, baby, it was cold <laughs> when we were up there last year in the playoffs, wasn't it? Yep. Bryant is, I think they're in Missouri playing Christian Brothers in Missouri, 38-21 in the second quarter. Bryant leading. That team was the 6A, two-time 6A champion in Missouri. Really? Yeah, I read that in the paper this morning, so they're, they're the real deal. Yeah, I'm Brian. Of course, Brian's been the real deal. Yeah. Uh, they, they, um, Have you got a Conway? Uh, who's Conway playing? Conway's playing Bentonville, I think. That's a that's a big game. New coach up there at Conway. I haven't seen this. Conway is up 28-10 to 10 in the third quarter. Okay. Uh, that's where Buck James is now. Cabot leading Bentonville West 14-3, to 3, if you cared about that one. Glenwood's. Shutting out Fort Smith Northside, 42 zip in the third quarter. Like I said, uh, what about PA? They were they were down 21 to 10. I think it's 21 to. I was curious about Lake Hamilton too. Lake Ham- Lakeside beat Lake Hamilton last week. Yeah, Lake Hamilton leading Jonesboro seven nothing. That's in the, that's, that score in the first quarter. Yeah, I think. What Lakes- were you talking about? Uh, PA. PA. Last I saw, they're losing 21 to eight. Against Madison Ridgeland from Mississippi, 21-8 in the second quarter. I got 21-10 at halftime now, so maybe they were, how they got from, maybe they got a safety. 21 a safety 10. somewhere, yeah. yeah 21-10 at half. Madison. PA gets points in weird ways. They're my new, like I said, my new favorite <clears throat> team, uh, Madison Ridgeland out of Mississippi. Um, Warren, I said Warren Whitehall, 13-13. Uh, Lakeside Lake up 24-12, I think you said that. Yeah. Uh, um, third quarter, yeah, Lakeside team. We got them for a homecoming. Yeah, that's... Uh, Junction City, home of Jacob Pumphrey, leading Carlisle 27 to 7. I think Hot Springs and Lakeside, well, that, those were probably going to be our two choices for homecoming, but Hot Springs pretty good too. Like yeah. I said, they won yesterday 24 yeah, 7 over neither, Arkadelphia. Yeah, neither one of them is a, a really good choice this year, the way they're both playing. So uh, Arkansas High had a big win last week. They may be off this week. Uh, 
Actually, I think I saw they were going to play Lake Village, maybe. or No, Hamburg. They were playing Hamburg. Um, Hamburg so it's going to be listed down the lower class. Yeah, Arkansas yeah. High and Hamburg, they have not started yet, according to this. Hamburg was supposed to play Lake Village, and they had to cancel the game because Lake Village had sickness go through their team, didn't have enough players. So uh, they, they picked up Arkansas High this week, So, uh, but no score there. A lot of the, a lot of these lower lower classification teams don't turn in don't turn the scores in or they don't or they're not able to retrieve them or or maybe Hootens just doesn't care one of the uh, other well, they're not on fearless either so. fearless right, so. yeah uh, did you get the Prescott score there seven to three on McAllister Oklahoma okay. in the second quarter okay Elder right in Camden it was we got a score from uh Connor back in the studio early but I don't remember what he said I think he said it was 14 to 12 but I don't remember who you said was winning. Uh, I think it was El Dorado that El was up. Uh, Connor, I think you can talk to us while we're on the air there. If you've got, if you've got that score, just uh, just sh- twenty to twelve, El Dorado. Oh, oh, Camden. Camden. oh wow, Camden's up twenty to twelve on uh, on El Dorado. Okay, some good teams in this in Magnolia's uh, conference this year. Seven four eight. South. And we've got uh, you know, we, and we got Fairview at Fairview. Fairview. South. This year, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, next, so, yeah, they're yeah. going to be that. You know, last year Magnolia started off the year on a good roll. They went, they won their first four games, but then they came in. I think it was what was it, Lakeside and uh, in Camden Fairview. They all kind of came in there, and so I think they lost a couple of games uh, there uh, along the way last year, but still able to uh, get into the into the postseason last year, and hopefully we'll do that once again. Well. Uh, let's see. Halftime. Let's take one final break here on our Magnolia Regional Medical Center halftime show. Second half coming up. Magnolia leads 24 to 10 over Crossit. This is Panther football. It's mighty hard to resist an odor of Domino's Loaded Tots. You have your choice of three different mouth-watering toppings. There's Domino's Cheddar Bacon Loaded Tots with a perfect combo of gooey cheese and crisp bacon. Or how about Domino's Philly Cheesesteak Loaded Tots? Or last but not least, Domino's Melty Three Cheese Loaded Tots covered with a blend of mozzarella, cheddar, and provolone cheese plus Alfredo sauce. Add some Loaded Tots to your next Domino's order. Order online or on the Domino's app and earn piece of the pie rewards. Celebrate summer with a great CD rate from People's Bank. We're offering a CD rate of 5.01% annual percentage yield for 10 months. Minimum balance is $1,000. This offer is effective and APY is accurate from June 1, 2023 and is subject to change at any time. Come see us today at People's Bank. Substantial penalty for early withdrawal. See Bank for details. Member FDIC. My bank is People's Bank. Tri-County Oil is a proud sponsor of Magnolia Panther Sports. Tri-County is your number one source for a complete line of Exxon Mobil oils, K1 kerosene, mineral spirits, antifreeze, no-tax farm diesel, tax-paid road diesel, and 91-octane non-ethanol gasoline, plus gear oil, grease, motor and hydraulic oil, transmission fluids, and more. Tri-County Oil on North Vine in Magnolia. Open Monday through Friday, 7 to 5. Why would you go anywhere else for oil or gas? We appreciate your business at Tri-County Oil. Get up after a great night's sleep. Get the fitness machines, including the Peloton bike. Then enjoy a hot breakfast prepared by someone else. Log on to the Wi-Fi and get to work. Sound like your house? I'm talking about the Hampton Inn by Hilton in Magnolia. If you live in Magnolia, you probably don't need a roof with all these benefits. So tell your family and friends when they visit about the Hampton by Hilton, where they will earn Hilton honor points. And nothing says you can't treat yourself to a night at the Hampton. Growing older comes with its challenges, but with L. Jennings Law, securing your future doesn't have to be one of them. Our elder law expertise delves deep into the intricacies of Medicaid planning and long-term care, ensuring that your family home remains just that, yours. You've built a life, let us help you protect it. Expertise from big firms delivered with local care. Call 501 501- 501-WILL or visit ljenningslaw.com. Knock your taste buds out of the park with the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington on the Magnolia Square. We're talking mouth-watering steaks cut in-house, burgers, loaded nachos, salads, wraps, quesadillas, and more. Choose from an array of legendary baked potatoes like the chicken fajita and chicken bacon ranch. Menu updates, picks, and more. Search the Corner Clubhouse on Facebook. Daily specials, a full bar, big screens for the big games, and only a short stop away. It's the Corner Clubhouse. Satisfy your cravings with a Grand Slam today.
know, Jeff, if, if only the folks listening in could hear the stories that fly and have a job know, between while we're in the car. That's right, yeah. <laughs> We, the problem is we've probably told some of them on the air before and just don't I'm remember. Sure we, I'm sure we, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Magnolia should be receiving the ball to start the second half. Of, you know, uh, again, 24-10, to 10, Magnolia's really controlled the game, but, you know, just because uh, they missed some, you know, those the extra Panthers points. The wrong end of the field. They did. Gonna have Dispute to went all the way from one end to the other. He's going to be tired by the time he gets back there. And he's backing up. He'll be the return man for the Panthers, the deep man. He's going to be the only guy back, too. Ross said, uh, they, they, I know he's halfway expecting an onside kick here. Yeah. They kicked short the last time. It's a 24-10 Magnolia lead as the third quarter gets underway on Don Hubbard Field at Panther Stadium. They are ready to kick it away. Here comes the kick, end over end, far side of the field, short kick. Fair catch called. We'll take it in. At the 31 yard line. That's, is that Smoochie? Yeah, Smoochie's out there. I think Coach King, one of the sure handed guys out there, now he probably told Smoochie, fair catch it. Don't get out there and let a guy get ahead of steam and take a shot at you. What was the uh, kicking off there? Was Brian Flores, 19. They got a different guy for kickoff, punt, everything. Well, I think, I think that Urbina has kicked off some. I think they're both, they're both listed as okay. kickers. Yeah. So Panther ball. At their 31-yard line, first down and 10 as we begin play in the second half. Panthers with one wide to each side out of their flex bone attack. As Antonio Brooks up under center, right slot back comes in motion. Give off to the fullback, spun around and brought down. Going to be a short gain of about uh, two yards. J2. Yes, that's J2. Yep. 53 yards in the first half, now 55. And the Panthers 33, second and eight. The Panthers have been able to move the ball. They've only had to punt one time tonight, I think, but uh, just uh, had one turnover on downs. But pretty much they've, they've had their way on offense. Not a lot of yards to show for it. Right slide back comes in motion. There it goes the toss. That is Dismu coming to the near side, and as he turns up field, he ran into a wall, was driven back, got about to the 37. So going to be about four yards on that uh, toss sweep to Dakota Dismuke. O'Brien oh, Banks. 36, excuse oh, me, three yards. Three yards. O'Brien Banks, and he's the uh, outside linebacker over here on the near side. He, he not only turned Dakota in, but was able to make the tackle. Panthers tried to speed sweep there and unable to. Third and about five hit hitter for, for the Panthers. Ball at the left hash mark, and uh, fake to the fullback. There's a toss, goes to, uh, that's Malvin Cross. A lot of runner room on the right side, into crossing territory, inside the 40, inside the 30, down inside the 20, before being drugged down from behind. Going to spot the ball down around the 17-yard line. A big run for Malvin Cross. That was uh, Taunton, the middle linebacker. He's, uh, I think that was him who, who dove and got him at his feet. As he was just about to take it to the house, but a big play by the Panthers, Malvin Cross. First spotted on the 15. That's 49 yards. And it's the first down for the Panthers. 10 20 and counting, third quarter. Magnolia up 24 10, trying to add to it. Cross is going to come yeah, off. He needs a drink of water after yeah. all that. That was a pretty good little run there from Malvin Cross. Uh, running off to the, uh, to the near side, I think. Pull back, wasn't it? Yep. Day two. Young to the 12, 11, got about four yards. Four yards. Four yards. Second down, and I'm looking at the chain gang. It looks like four. Second down and six. Time they're on different wavelengths, but anyway, that's uh, Caleb Roach, left slot now for the Panthers. He goes in motion, and the handoff goes back to the fullback. That's right there over the right side. Radarius got it down inside the five to the four-yard line, a seven-yard carry. They go with. Yeah, we've seen uh, yeah, Radarius Moore. That's the first time we've seen him. He's been in the last two plays. Yeah, we've seen him at tight end. Right. 
Well, we haven't seen him yet back at fullback. He made some big runs for him last week, though, late in the game. As he came in, and uh, Coach King talked like he wasn't surprised. He expecting good things out of him. He's just a, he's just a junior. Going back to the fullback, and he started up the middle. He slipped a little bit right. He got it down about as far as the one-yard line, it looks like. I don't know. I don't know the doorstep of the goal line. So it's going to be uh, three yards. Second down and goal. The one yard line, yes, three yards. Right slot back comes in motion. Right back to right. Darius, they go. And he rides it right on into the end zone. Touchdown, Magnolia. I think they were showing her on the, where were they showing her on the three yard line over there? No, they moved the chain oh, okay. back. They okay. moved it back for the extra point. So it was okay. Yeah, it, it was was, was on yeah, the one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So one yard run for for Idarius. I said he was a tight end. That wasn't him. That was Condarius Waller. That was yeah. the tight end earlier. All mm-hmm. right, let's see if we can get an extra point. There's a good snap. The kick away. It is uh, barely, it barely got across the, the crossbar. I don't know if that was deflected or what, but it just barely got across the crossbar. But they do get a point after a touchdown, and it's 31-10 Magnolia with 8 to play third quarter. This is Panther football. Are all your financial goals equally important? Probably not. That's why it's a good idea to identify goals as must-have versus nice-to-have. A must-have goal might be achieving a comfortable retirement, while a nice-to-have goal might be a vacation home by the beach. So it's important to prioritize these goals and invest accordingly. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor, Steve Hardy, Mark Woods, Patrick Dodd, or Laura Kroll. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Though it didn't clear it by a month, still good to see a point after a touchdown. Yeah, still. seven seven plays, sixty nine yards, three minutes forty eight seconds on that drive. Still not hundred percent in sync on the extra points, but but like I say, it, it went through the uprights, and that's all that matters. Baby steps, baby steps. That's right. Again, last week everything was perfect, where they just missed one out of seven. Sanchez kicks off end over end, and that's going to be taken near side fifteen yard line and. That was Bunton. Bunton comes up the near side, and he is tumbled shy of the 30-yard line. you got to consider that a successful defense of the run of the uh, running game or the, the kick return game. Bunton made a hard jab step to his left and dispute, go to dispute Bitport, and then he came back to the right. And, and Bunton, yeah, he's, he's very dangerous on those kickoff returns. They've done a good job controlling him on the run game, but. Only uh, seven carries for 13 yards in the first half for Bunt. Yeah, in the open on return. Some, somebody's somebody's going to be looking for yeah. him if not for, for no other reason than for a return man. Yeah. Bunt to the right of the quarterback, Max Brooks, in first and 10. Shift a uh, slot from the right to the left. Quarterback keeps, runs, tries to find an opening on the right side. It closed up, and down he goes. Was George, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? George and then Ty Lee Biddle were there, too. He, 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 he saw Ty Lee, and that stopped him, and then George Jackson made the uh, tackle. It was like, because when he saw Ty Lee, there was nowhere to go. No, uh, excuse me, no gain on the play. Second down and 10. The 29-yard line of cross it. And the flag no, is thrown. Somebody lined up apparently offside. Back and cross it. The, the wide receiver, I think. But across the line, that referee said, that line is right here. He was in fact. Is that what he was saying? He was emphatically showing him with two hands up and down. And he was like, this is where I said the line was. Well, I was going, I was wondering because I'm thinking, man, I don't remember ever seeing that signal before. Yeah. Right? So backed is, him up to the 24. He said, this is the line. <laughs> Quarterback wants to throw. He's not going to. He's going to be sacked. And if he ever goes down, and he finally will. Back at the 15-yard line as Carter got in there late yeah. to help out of Marion Harris, and I think another one was in there. Yeah, Marion Harris and Kevin Carter, that was just uh, meet me at the quarterback situation there as they go in there and 
throw Brooks down for a loss. Uh, the referee, I'm surprised he let the play go as long as he did. I thought he might try to blow that whistle a little bit quicker to protect the quarterback. Well, I, well I, he went. He was ended up back about five yards further. They spotted at the 19, yeah. about a five-yard loss. Yeah. Coming up on seven minutes to play in the third quarter. 31-10, Panther lead. Quarterback hands off, and Bunton is wrapped up quickly in the backfield as he tried to slip out to the left side, but somebody got, got his arms around him and brought him down. Chevis Johnson got him Chevis. first. Yeah, he, he, he was holding on for dear life. As Chevis is limping a little bit, yeah, too. Buns, he's, uh, yeah, but he's, he's not very big, but he's he's quick, and he's pretty you know, pretty good drive on his legs, but good job by the Panther defense. Cross has got to punch football away. Chevis hurt himself. He's looking to the sideline. I don't think he's ready to come out. Nobody, apparently nobody is seeing him because he is, he's limping pretty badly out there after that tackle. But their punter is on. Snap a little to the right. The punter, Urbina, gets his line drive punt away. It went through the hands of one man, picked up back at the 37-yard line, up the near sideline, comes Dismuke, and then Dismuke chased out of bounds in cross the territory. Yeah, Kamarion Burton was the shallow man. Went through his fingertips, and then luckily for the Panthers, though, Dismuke was back there, and he picks it up makes a good return. The return's going to be it's actually inside the 45 at the 43. Oh, the other guy saying about the 41, so let's see. Yeah, 43 is where they put it. Good 38 our, yard line. Good opportunity. The Panthers Dismuke. really put some space between them and the Eagles with another drive right here. 6.08 to play here in the third quarter. After the game, got our Domino's post-game show. Check out those carry-out deals, those seven ninety nine carry-out deals at, at Domino's. All one-topping pizzas are included on any of Domino's five crusts. Left slot in motion. Going to give to the fullback. That is Young, and a flag comes flying in on the run from uh, Javion Young. Picked up pretty good yardage, about five yards or, or so, but uh, may come back. Yeah, that's holding territory right there. Yep, holding on the Panthers. Just about guarantee that flag comes in from that umpire right there behind the line. They're going to call. They'll be holding on the offensive line. They're going to mark it off 10 from the – let's see. It looks like, I guess they marked it from the spot of the foul because it's yeah. not – Yeah, it's eight for eight yards yeah, from the previous yards, spot. Yeah, right. Back to the 49 of Magnolia. If the game will name our People's Bank player of the game. For a friend of People's Bank, if your friend opens any checking account, you and your friend both receive a thank you gift. Visit referpbmag.com to earn your choice of an Amazon gift card or the current featured gift. People's Bank member FDIC. Right slot in motion. Going to hand off to the fullback, though, running straight ahead. And, boy, right into a... Oh, right into a. Yeah, we're gonna get a, got a little yeah. extracurricular activity. That's gonna the, be uh, the run was up the middle, and that yeah. was off to the side, off to the left side a little bit. That uh, was number sixty-one, Caden Harold, who's going to come out of the game. He was into it with a cross at eagle, and the coach going to come over and gently put his arm around him and have a little talk with him. Might have carried that, uh, carried that, that block a little. A little extended block there, and yeah, it was after the play. And these guys staring in the face for that long. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna that's a whopper all the way back to the thirty-eight yard line. One of our assistant coaches down there is. I think that's the offensive line coach, Luke Bowser's, having a good having a word with uh, Peyton Harrell down there. First down and twenty-nine. For the Panthers from their 38-yard line, Antonio Brooks wants to throw it. Throws it up, and that's going to be picked off as Pascal intercepts. Coming back the other way. He is back to the 30 of Magnolia, still on his feet on the far sideline. Now spun around, goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line of Magnolia. Up and got it. That's about a 40-yard return for Pascal. The intended receiver was in and uh pascal nick o'gwen is five foot four and uh pascal is six two and he just he just went over the top of o'gwen and uh you know about a foot taller able to make uh interception gonna spot him out at 21 of magnolia so 
First down and 10 for the Cross at Eagles. So that, that, that penalty kind of put McVay behind the chains, forced him to get out of their game plan, throw the ball. 5.07 to go in the third quarter. Quick swing pass over to the left side. Go to pass. Go pass. Boy, hit immediately and knock back. More help comes. It's going to be a very small gain, if any. I think that was Burton over there. Kamarion Burton making the tackle. He was, he was there as soon as the catch was made. So good play by Kamarion Burton. He gave a yard. Yeah, one yard to the 20 yard line. Second down and nine. Clock running with 442 to play in the third quarter with Magnolia up 31 to 10. Button switches from right to left of his quarterback, Brooks. Brooks wants to throw. He is chased out of the pocket as he rolls out to the right side under pressure. He lets it fly, and he underthrew Ellis Mays, trying to hit him on the run, and skipped it in there, pass incomplete. But Chevis Johnson was hot on the trail of quarterback Max Brooks. Uh, also, uh, Marion Harris. So, uh, Brooks was, he was pretty much running for his life there. Uh, he, he shook off that, that limping earlier. He didn't have I mean, like he, he I don't think he ever, came, he ever came out of the game. No, he didn't. No. He's still out there, third down and nine. Yeah, he's looking fine out there now. So, yep. I, mean, I don't yep. know, he may have just had a little cramp or something. Gossip may have to burn a timeout here. They have only got four seconds on the play clock. Two, yep, one, timeout. yep, timeout for the cross at Eagles. Four minutes, 26 seconds to play in quarter number three, 31-10 Magnolia. This is Panther football. You're on the come up and proud of your grind, which is why the is your favorite app. Waiting in lines, not great for your bottom line. So you hit the app to order ahead. Your faves are ready when you pull up and you're on your way again with the quickness. Order ahead in the McDonald's app to save time. Use the app, get large fries for a buck. We'll prep while you're on the way when you choose dine-in, curbside, or counter pickup. I participate in McDonald's. Offer valid through 12 31 23. This offer is only available in the McDonald's app. Twenty-one to twenty. That's after three battle going on there. That, that's always a good battle. Oh, it is. Oh, that, right that, you know, that's a, just you know, it's like when Magnolia and Camden play. That's just right down the road from each other, and that's always a good game. Third and nine. Third here. nine coming up here. Like they're going with an empty set. Two slot back. Brooks steps up. Oh, not going to do anything. He is corralled, and down he goes. Is that uh, 58? Ty Lee. Ty Lee. Ty Lee Biddle got at first. George Jackson helped him out, and when they went to the empty set, back they just laid their ears back and came after him. He, there's no backs picking anybody up, and uh, he he had no loss. Back to the 31. Fourth and 20. Crossing only has 13 net yards rushing in this game. One for it. Max looking to throw. He does deep post route and a heck of a by Pascal as he uh, dove for it and able to haul it. That's going to go for Crossing inside the five yard line. Three Panthers were around him, but Max Brooks and Pascal, uh, he's showing why he's such a good receiver and he, he laid out and made the grab. 27 yards to the four yard line. First and goal for the Eagle. That was fourth and about. 20. Yeah, yeah, fourth and 20. So they, yeah. It was first and goal at the four yard line. Brooks going to hand it off to Bunton. And Bunton, Bunt, boy, no sooner than he took the handoff, he was wrapped up. And the Panther that made the tackle was down and hurt. Well, he, uh, he got hit by his own guy. Carter got there, and whoever's down, him and Carter kind of met at the ball carry and, and, uh, Button running. being so low. That's, that's Marion Harris. I oh, Mar yeah, yeah Marion Harris. He got his own team. Uh, they were there really quick. All still at the four-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and goal for the for the Crossed Eagles. I'm thinking throw this football to get on. Seconds on the play clock. Bring a man in motion right to left. Going to swing it out to the left side. But that, that was a... As uh, that was George, George. Jackson yep. that came in and he was able to outstretch and uh, knock the ball away. And now we get down over on the sideline. 
good. People going after each other over uh, there. And we got guys. We we may have some ejections right there. As somebody guy looks like got into trouble, and then looked like the whole team of the Panthers yeah, went gonna, to his defense, and now flags flying. There's going to be some ejections from this. A lot of it. Uh, there's going to be multiple ejections. I'm afraid. What a time the uh, I didn't see what happened when the ball got knocked away. They it was a scrum for the ball, but it played. I'm not sure if Kamarian Burton is uh leading Dismuke off or if Dismuke is leading Burton off, but I gotta think one of them is probably or if not both is gonna be involved here. There's yeah. another one being led off, another Panther that seems to be more agitated than the other two. That is uh that's, that's the fourteen. That is that's uh, Malachi. Yeah, Malachi Ross. Ross. Coach King isn't happy with his with his crew. Panther coaches are telling him, "Look, you got to be smarter than yeah. that. You can't do that." Coach King is still over on the other side, but yeah. some of the assistant coaches are are uh, expressing their feelings to the uh, to the Panther yeah, that, team. And that was over on the cross. Now, look, I'll give the cross sideline a lot of credit. They didn't have the whole sideline jump over there, so that was some good restraint by the Eagle coaches to keep the majority of the team back. So the officials are trying to sort it all out. They don't have any kind of replay, no. so this they're just like going to have to go by what they saw. But they're they're over there yeah. discussing right now. I don't know. I don't know how you figure out who was doing what. Coach King's telling these guys to stay back. Yeah, Panthers are trying to run back out on the field, but uh, some of them, probably one or more, is not going to be allowed to go back out. We'll see. Yeah. Here comes the uh, the referee out. See if we can see if we can hear. I think he's Mike, didn't he? But he won't give any numbers. No, he won't. Let me see if I can see what happened on that play. The referee's talking to Coach King. And now the coach from Crossit, Vincent Newton, is coming over. They'll also will get in on the conversation. I, I, yeah. We we probably won't know who all is ejected because we don't have a don't have a mic. There are, uh, more, more than likely, we're going to get. I think this may be the play here, Dan. On the nope, that's that's the. Let's see if we can figure this out here. You watch that. I'll watch this. Maybe right. you can see some of it. Yeah. So one of the Eagle players drove a Panther into the bench over there. I don't know who it was. And two then two flags flew in immediately. Two flags flew. There was some players from the cross at bench who got over there. Some of the Magnolia players came over to their aid. They they got them out of there pretty fast. Chevis Johnson came out pretty fast. I, it, it didn't look like there was too many of them. Scruffling around, there's a couple of players talking to each Looks other. Like a lot of guys going in there and uh, you know for support, maybe right. but really trying to break yeah. it up. I think so. Hopefully, there won't be much in the way of ejections here, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Here comes the referee. Out to the unsportsmanlike is going to be offsetting on both teams. Yeah. Offset. Offset. That's all. Is that it? Nobody got ejected. Well, that's good if nobody got ejected. She just she just showed offsetting, unsportsmanlike both ways. But now the referee's walking over to the Panthers' side. Well, and I think Malachi's been ejected. It's not a bad thing to to let this thing simmer down for a minute. Yeah, I think I think Malachi's going to the locker room. Looks like he's gonna yeah he's gonna be. Assisted to the locker room. I don't know if anybody yeah, on the okay. its side. I cannot see so, yeah. over there. Looks like looks the, like one of their pan, one of their players is walking off. Yeah, so, so I one, think there it was one, one on the both ways. I can't. Was, that may be those two guys. The the camera angle cuts out before you get over there. Where's the line of scrimmage now? Looks like it's down around. Yeah, so one one Three player on each line. side, I think. Oh, 
Looks like it balls at the three yard line. It'll be third down and goal. So it looks yeah. like offsetting one sportsmanlike and then one ejection, I think, on right. each side, but we're not 100% sure of that. Right. Low snap to the quarterback. He's going to keep it, runs over the right side, and he'll get in for a touchdown. That's a three yard carry, and that was uh, Max that was, Brooks. Yeah, that was Brooks. Quarterback was it? Okay, yeah, that was Brooks number one. Yep, that was him. I was looking at when they when they when the, when it number broke there. I thought it was an eleven rather than a one. Yeah, that was one. He may have been blocking for him. So Brooks on a three yard carry. Well, this is still anybody's ball game now. The extra point here make this a two score game. Older for uh, than is Burford. Cross it doesn't have enough. Kicker. I don't think they've got enough players on the field. I'm trying to come up with. Still got plenty of time. 18 on the play clock, so that'll get there somebody else. Yeah. Two minutes 23 seconds in the third quarter. You never know. After something like that happens, what you know? What? That's right. Which way momentum is going to go? The That's extra right. point kick is good. So it's 31, 17, 31, 17, our score. Magnolia on top of Cross at 223 in the third quarter. This is Panther football. Have you noticed all the extra fees when you try to buy a vehicle? At Magnolia Motor Company, we never charge extra fees. Our vehicles are painstakingly priced to give you the best value in the industry without any extra fees. The value that you get comes from our dedicated 139-point inspection, complete service, and our reconditioned to meet your expectations. Magnolia Motor Company is your fee-free dealer. Discover the difference today on the 7982 bypass in Magnolia or view our interactive website at magnoliamotorcompany.com. Magnolia Motor Company, quality first. Seven plays, 21 yards, minute 47 on that drive for the Cross at Eagles. 2.23 left, third quarter. Yeah, so got a long way to go on this one. Oh, yeah, this two-touchdown game. Well, we'll see kind of, you know, both sides get a little chippy. Uh, Flores is going to kick off. Kick off end over end, far side of the field. That's going to bounce, and it's going to go out of bounds. Dismuke was the deep man there for the Panthers. Kicked it away from him. So the uh, over gets the 35, line. right? Florida, Looks Florida, like it. After the game, got our Domino's post-game show coming your way. Check out those $7.99 carry-out deals at Domino's. Eight-piece wings or boneless chicken for just $7.99. Carry-out. Domino's dip and bread twist combos. Five cheese dip and bread twists or cheesy marinara dip and bread twists. Seven ninety nine each. Great carry out deals from Domino's and Magnolia and Camden. Dan, is that the moon over there? Everybody's been talking about the last couple of days. It looks like it's yeah. It's it was full a couple of nights yeah, ago. Yeah. The blue moon, the blue second moon. full moon of the month, and uh, trying to run it up the middle, but that middle is shut down as the Panthers tried to carry it straight ahead. That was uh, Young on the carry. I think he, he lost the yard. He did lose the yard. He did lose the yard. So Cross has kind of gotten fired up after. All the uh, things that happened, and Magnolia's, you know, ahead by 14, but what's two according to the football on the field? <laughs> chain Gang says one. Who knows? But that's where the football yeah, is. It's the 33. It back. Second down and 12. Hand off once again. Again, going to run it straight ahead with the fullback, and not much doing across the 35 to the 36. So got the two back plus one. So three yards, and it brings up third down and nine. Let's see what the Panthers are going to do here. Yep, third and long. Send uh, Jaquavius Ross wide to the right side. They got their yeah, they got their tight end lined up on the near side, the left side. And yeah. uh, Condarius Waller, yeah, un unbalanced to the left. Brooks under center, left slot back, Roach in motion. Quarterback is going to keep it, but, man, nothing doing as he tried to uh, find an opening on the right side. It wasn't there. He got smothered and brought back. Armand Williams, the uh, weak side linebacker, he came in and just pretty much gave him a, a body slam, picked him up and slung him backwards. They, they, they say he made it back to the line of scrimmage, so it would be no gain on the play, but the, the momentum right now definitely on the side of the Cross at Eagles. Well, it's fourth down and nine. 
Oh, we'd like to see a good booming punt here from Braden Sanchez. Against, let's kick it to the far side of the field away from Isaiah Bunt. A two men back button on the near side. 23 seconds left, third quarter of the kick. Bounces and it will roll to Bunton. Picked up at the 31 yard line. He started to run, then cut back around, and now flags fly in behind. I didn't see anybody blocking there. That might be a face mask. I look like something was pulled there. Yeah, he it said looked face like a mask. jersey. Yeah, he just signaled a face mask to the other guy, so that's going to be, you know, they'll, they'll move. I don't know if it'll be a five or 15 yard variety. A jersey. Yeah, I did too, but, uh, but he just, the uh, official over here on the near side just signaled to the referee face mask, personal foul. That's so, the big one. Yeah, 15 yards. So that's another. It's going to get him close to midfield. Yeah, well, a couple of penalties here have kind of hurt the Panthers. And the unsportsmanlike, which put Crossing in good position. Now uh, they'll have it at their 47-yard line. Now personal foul face mask gives them another good drive, so. Uh, 12 seconds to go in the quarter. Magnolia up by 14, but uh, still still anybody's ball game. And Brooks going to hand off. He hits button, button, nothing in the middle. He cuts out left. He is to the first down marker, has the first down, still on his feet. Finally tossed down, down inside the 35 at the 34-yard line of Magnolia. 19-yard carry for Isaiah Bunton. Oh, wait a minute. We got a hold flag. On. We got hold a flag. On. Yep, going to be a hold. Not, I don't see where the flag is. I'm not sure if it's down the field. But it's coming back. Yeah. It's, it's, if it's a spot foul, it's probably end up going to, they're going to spot it from about where the first down marker is. So they're probably going to be a net zero. There, there he is. He's yeah, going to walk it back. It, it's going to end up being a, yeah, about a, a net negative one. Back to the 46. So first down and 11. Coming up here. That's we're going to start the clock. That should be the end of the quarter. Yep, that's it. That. After three, 31 17 Magnolia. This, well, wait a minute. What do you got to It's clock's on zero, folks. Yep, yep. That's yep, the end that's of three. Right. Yep. This is Panther football. You listen up, guys. I have a sneak peek inside the Rocket Fast playbook. So here's what it said. First, we get him inside the tunnel. Then we blindside him with the wall of foam. Next, just call an audible. Then comes the hail. Hit him with the fast pass. It's genius. With these football players. Run every time. Hey, Coach, I don't think that's the same sport. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just sing the song. Rocket Fast Car Wash. Rocket Fast. It's a blast. And your vehicle is clean. Now we're going to the final 12 minutes of this one. Right now, 14-point Magnolia Panther lead. Momentum going the way of Cross at Eagles right now. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd rather have, right now, I'd rather have that 14-point lead than momentum. Well, you're right. And it's just, you know, just one big play for the Panthers away from getting the momentum back. But you're also one big play from the Eagles putting something on the board here and then really, you know, being anybody's ball game. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things when this game's over with, Coach King's not going to be happy with. Um, Chevis was cramping up and came to the sideline. Yeah. He tried to go back out there, but I think they're going to make him sit out of play. Quarterback Max Brooks, he pumps, now throws, has the lead. But, oh, baby, he took a lick. The ball came loose. Let's see if they rule a completion. They do. Panther football at the 40-yard line. That was Purifoy, Brayden Purifoy, who put the hit on the receiver over there, and the receiver's still down. Purifoy, he's only 5'9", 150, but he brought every ounce of that 150, and the, the receiver's still down over there for the Eagles. Is that taunt? I, I'm not sure if that's him. It's 20-something yeah. over there. I, I honestly didn't know that he had possession. That, if, if there was replay, that would be one that would be replayed for sure, but there, there it's, uh, it's real to catch and a fumble. I didn't see who recovered the fumble, but uh, but it was definitely Purifoy who made the hit. Oh, he made a hit there. Yeah, yeah, that's Taunton. It is Taunton. Yeah, yeah, he's, I, I, he's, he he's was, back up on his feet, so that's, that's good. He's, I bet he lost right. his breath. He probably had the wind knocked out of him because he got hit right in the bread basket. And uh, big, big time hit. Well, there's the big play. We said Magnolia's one big play away, and, and there, there it was. So credit Braden Purifoy with a big hit. 
Let's we'll see if they can move the football, run some clock. I got the ball at the 40-yard line of the Cross at Eagles. That is a big, big, big turnover caused by Braden Purifoy. First and 10, Magnolia. Antonio Brooks, the quarterback, fullback, Jamie on Young. Get the numbers on the slots. Left slot, though, comes in motion. Going to the fullback. That is uh, Young, and Young will get it down to the 37-yard line. Picked up about four. Yeah, four, second and six. Coming up for Magnolia. Well, Haskell's... Uh, Haskell. Uh, Jamie on is one of the running backs. Yeah, well, Jamie on just came out right there. He just went in. Second and six for the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Roster? Yeah, I got it right here. All right. And right there he is more. Fullback left slot back comes in motion. They go to right there he is. Right, Darius, just a fullback dive straight ahead inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. That's about four yards for right. How many Panthers, did you give me on that? Third and four. Um, four, I think. Third and four now. Don't ask me to remember a couple of <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> ask me to remember Sorry. two years ago, I can tell you. Handoff goes once again to the fullback, and that middle is plugged up. He did not get much on this one. Going to bring up fourth down. Only got about a yard or two. I don't, I don't know if he got that. Maybe he gave him a yard. I don't think they gave him that. I think, it, yes, back at the 33, so fourth, uh, fourth and three. So it will say a yard. Well, the Panthers go Inside the 40 at the 33-yard line, so this will be four down territory. Might try to draw them off here. Well, first down would be huge. Left slide back comes in motion. There's a toss to Dis- Dismuke. Dismuke, he makes the miss. Gets to the sideline. He's down inside the 10-yard line. Stays on his feet to get close to the five. Not going to rule him down at the nine-yard line. But Dakota Dismuke on the toss. He gets it down inside the 10. That's going to be 24 yards and a Panther first down. Well, that's some good ball handling back there by Smoochie. I thought the fullback had it. And then uh, Smoochie pulled it out there, flipped it out to Dismuke, and Dismuke uh, uh, pretty shifty over there on the far side and just about got in for a touchdown. Number 24, Watson Belcher saved it for the Eagles, but first and goal for the Panthers. The Panthers up to the line of scrimmage now. First and goal at the nine-yard line. Right slot comes in motion. They're going right back to the fullback. And got a pile moving forward. Got it down around the five-yard line. Number two, Jamie Young, Young, the fullback on the carry. Gain of four. Second down and goal here for the Panthers. 64 yards, 14 carries now for Jamie Young. Young. Panthers line up. Brooks goes right back to the fullback. Young gets a good push on the right side. He'll get about two more to the three-yard line. They just tell that offensive line up there to, to push ahead. Burford to tackle for cross it. And third and goal for Magnolia. That is Caleb Roach, I think, the, the slot on the right side it is. Uh, Dismuke yep. on the left. Yep. Young is the fullback. Antonio Brooks, the quarterback. One wide, one wide receiver on each side. No tight end. Brooks up under center. Left slot in motion. There's the toss. It's down at the oh. ankles. The ball came loose, and Crossett comes up with the football. The toss. They brought Dismuke in motion, and the toss from Brooks went down and hit him around the ankles, and the ball was loose, and Crossett got on top of it in a hurry, well, so they deny the Panthers. Yeah, Magnolia, they uh been their own worst enemy at times tonight, and there was another case pitch uh, from uh, Smoochie. was uh, just just too low for Dismuke to get down there. When he went down to get it, kicked it uh, right to across a defender. Ball's going to be at the seven-yard line. It'll be Eagle football. Well, the only good thing that happened with that drive, they did run a little time off the clock. So 7.49 right. left, still got a two-touchdown lead. 
Trump in their own territory. Pushed by the Panther defensive front. He's not going very He'll be tackled at the uh, six-yard line. I, he just barely, well, maybe the seven. He just got back to the line of scrimmage. Vernon Tucker, he got in there just about the time the hand made. So good penetration by Vernon Tucker, the pound junior. And he met Button pretty much. He could get ahead of steam going. It'll be second down. And, and guys in over there, isn't it? It's a, it sure is. It's, it's a little, little beyond full, but still bright. He goes, quarterback takes the snap from his two-yard line, a low snap, hands off, and he is met just as he takes fumble, the NFL fumble. game loose. Maybe Panther football. Yes, it's Panther football at the three or maybe the two-yard line. Okay, it was caused by number one, Chevis Johnson. He's back in, and then Jackson recovered. So there's another big play by the Panther defense, and uh, the Panthers get the turnover right back there at the three-yard line, first and goal. Yeah, it'll be at the three, first and, first and goal for the Panthers. So uh, whew, they were their own worst enemy, and then they got it right back. Jeffers Johnson, he was in there, but he almost got to the, to the quarterback before he handed off to the running back. Who we got offensively for the Panthers? We got Brooks at quarterback. Pullback. Is mute slot on the right side, and uh, Caleb Roach is the left slot. The play comes in from the sideline. First and goal at the three-yard line for Magnolia. Let's put this thing in. Brooks up under center, right slot in motion. To the fullback, they go, and he's going to be close, going to be just short of getting in. Seems like the whole last 30 minutes of this game has been played down there inside that 20-yard line. Got him at the two yards on the play. They're still, Panthers still saying touchdown. He's about at the, boy, he sure didn't miss it by much. He's inside the one. He's closer to the goal line with that ball than, than the one. Absolutely. Let's see. Who wants it? Who wants to carry it across and add six more for the Panthers? Panthers let some time run off the clock. They got eight on the play clock. Play in. Brooks up under center. Young behind him. Back to Brooks. He goes. Second effort, he's in. Touchdown, a one-yard run for Jamie Young Young. Second touchdown of the night for Jamie Young Young, a one-yard run there, and that might that might uh, wrap it up for the Panthers. Ran into a body. Young carries it in from inside the team to play. Still a lot of time. That's big, and the extra point is no, you have 38-17 over Crossit with 6-17 to play. This is Panther football. Getting your prescriptions filled is easy at Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Become one of their many satisfied customers. You can refill your prescriptions with Prince Pharmacy's mobile app, also with their website, Prince rx.com prince pharmacy has a 24-hour refill line too 234-7292 call before noon for same day free delivery they have a convenient drive through too at prince pharmacy in the southern medical group clinic at 211 east stadium in magnolia all right we breathe a little bit easier up here now yeah that was that was a tough last seven points after a couple of turnovers and some other stuff happening. But uh, Panthers got a big play from the defense. Chevis Johnson and the uh, recovery by George Jackson. Then Young takes it in for the touchdown. So after giving the ball away, getting it back two plays, three yards, 47 seconds into the end zone. They went to kick off. Whistle blew. What do we have? We got to take somebody off. Panthers ball maybe. start on the Panthers. Panthers. All sides there. So 38-17, and I think they a little breathe a little bit easier for Magnave, so they'll kick it again. Carry out a deal for uh, for only seven ninety nine at Domino's. All one topping pizzas are included on any of Domino's five crusts. Seven ninety nine carry out Domino's. A lot of other seven ninety nine carry out specials as well at Domino's East Main and Magnolia, also in Camden. 
613 to play. When there's a penalty on the kickoff, the referee doesn't even mark the yardage off. He just tells the kicker, back up five. <laughs> Braden Sanchez points at 35. So he, yeah, he referee said, yeah, just kick it, kick it from there. 38-17. Uh, That'd be three touchdowns. We're, yeah, who knows, though, in this, yeah. in this game. Pop-up kick comes near side. And it bounced off of the receiver's hands, and a button. it goes out of bounds. Button, yeah, tried to come up to it, and it was right on the sideline. We got another penalty flag, Dan. Are they gonna make him re-kick it again? Yep. Another procedure. Are we off? Are we? Are we got somebody leaving too early? Yeah. We've been close a couple of times for being off sides, and I guess, I guess here we go again. Somebody. So backs him up to the thirty. They're kicking off from the thirty. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can see. I just assume they kicked it to the other side of the field, though, with Button over here on the near side. Yeah. Sanchez to kick it away once again. This I'm time a, from I'm going to watch this time. Kickoff. This one goes more to the middle. It'll be taken at the 19-yard line up the near side. Hash mark out across the 35 to about the... 37-yard line, and Panthers uh, pile on top of there. So they kicked it far enough away from Button there. And uh, Watson the Belcher. return by uh, yeah, Belcher. He's their backup running back. So 6.06 to go in the game. And, you know, things have kind of calmed down after a little altercation earlier where, you know, we know Malachi uh, Ross was ejected from Magnolia. We think somebody was ejected from Crossing, so... Uh, you just worry about this last 606 to hope the tempers don't flare and get through this out without any more incidents. 606 to go. 38-17. Magnolia. I think. Game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. Go ahead. No, that's right. I was going to say, I think Malachi is going to sit out the next game. I think that's how that works. I'm not 100% sure. You have to ask Coach King that. Rooks throws a pass out over the middle, and that ball came loose. I thought he had it. Had it in his hands. I don't know if he if he was just juggling and dropped or if that was tipped away from him, but Ellis Mays couldn't hang on. Pass incomplete. I think somebody got a finger on it, and it just kind of threw the, the spin of the ball off, and Ellis Mays dropped it. Have you heard about People's Bank Companion Savings Account? Companion Savings, a new savings account, pays four and a quarter annual percentage yield. To qualify, simply open a new CD. APY effective June 1st, 2023. Subject to change at any time, call People's Bank for all the details. People's Bank, member FDIC. Listen after the game as we name our People's Bank player of the game. Those young ladies are having fun. Today. They are having a big time. What you ought to have come to the game, have yes, fun. Yes, sir. And off goes to the uh, running back and uh, across the 35 That's to about the 37. Back. That's a new guy. That's Zadian, ex, ex Zadian Brown. He's a little mite, too. 36. 5'6", 150. Sweat. No game, third and 10 from the 36 yard line. Button listed at 160. He's listed at 150. I think
15 yards. He showed some good speed. He did. Coach King said he got a you know pretty plenty of uh, running backs back here. He feel good about any of them. You can see why. First and ten, Magnet clock running. 3:35 left in the game. Panthers had the play come in from the sideline. Six seconds on the play clock as they line up. Center, he tosses on a sweep to the right side. 8-1 miss. They go to the house. To the 40, the 30, the 20. Magnolia. This is Panther football. The Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place have been recognized as Arkansas's top short-term rehabilitation and long-term care facility by U.S. News and World Report. At Wentworth Place, their mission is to provide the highest quality care to their residents, and they are honored to receive this prestigious award. Their cottages are homes large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 elders with private rooms, complete bath, a shared living room, open kitchen, dining area, and a spa located in the heart of Magnolia. It's the Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place. Visit cottagesofwentworthplace.com. Again, Caleb Roach. My apologies, Caleb. Caleb Roach with the 55-yard run for the touchdown. That drive, two plays, covered 69 yards. Took a minute 17. Short pop-up kick near side. Running up under it, and it went through the hands of Bunton. And uh, Panthers trying to get on top of the football. Man, he took a lick. He did. No sooner than it, than it hit him. And he, yeah, he's in pain. Yeah, that, he, he got hit right in the midsection. A rib cage shot there. Ball fell to the ground. I think it went out of bounds there, and then so it'll yeah, it did. So that's, the ball. That's why there was not a fumble recovery. The ball hit the hit went out of bounds. So cross it football from their 32 yard line. Button's going to go to the sideline. He's, he's, he, we may not see him anymore. Well, he's this, game, this game's yet. been decided. Yeah, he's, he needs to uh, yeah sit the rest of it. They've got. Uh, Brown, Xavier Brown in there. Xavier. Throw my charts away and just get yeah. the roster set. Okay. Handoff goes to uh, to Brown. Xavier Brown, a pretty good run, about a 10 yard run. Yep. He's going to have a first down. Like 11 yards to the 43. Not, he, not a lot of difference between him and uh, and Button. He, the way they the way they run, the way they look, about the same size. Domino's post game show coming up. Two minutes forty five seconds away from that playing time. Those Domino dip and bread twist combos: five cheese dip and bread twists, or cheesy marinara dip and bread twist. Seven ninety nine, like all the other Domino's uh, carry out specials. Running straight ahead, they go to Belcher, and Belcher with a big run for Crossing. He gets it all the way down to the 33-yard line of Magnolia. That's going to be 24 yards, 24 yards for number 24. Magnolia's got some of their backups in there. Like you said, uh, Kadarius Waller's in at one end position. They go back to uh, Xavier Brown. Elijah Broomfield is in at uh, defensive tackle. 5'8", 325-pound sophomore. Coming up on two minutes. 45-17 Magnolia. And Brooks play action. Now throws. He hits his receiver, Ellis Mays, over the right side. And Mays will pick up about six or seven. Looks like to the 27, so six. Secondary Panthers, second and seven, second and three. Bubba Williams 
the out there. Walker Carter's in the game at a defensive end slot. Quarterback swings out near side to Brown for Cross, and the uh, tackle going to be made there. Bubba Williams on the tackle for Magnolia on that uh, pass play to the near side. Spotted at the 22-yard line, about five yards on the play. He did pick up a first down. Minute 10 to play, clock's running. Just a matter now, what's the final score going to be? Magnolia up 45-17. Cross it like one more touchdown. And off goes to the uh, tailback, and he'll be turned back. That was again Xavier Brown on the carry. For the Crossed Eagles. Jadon Marshall in there with the tackle. Rodarius Moore also in there. Walker Carter. Rodarius Moore. 43 seconds remain in this one. Cross have probably got time for a couple more plays. Depends whether they want to run or pass here. Second and nine. Got a yard there, right? Yeah, 30 seconds. And Brooks goes back to Brown, but Brown's not going anywhere. So he's going to be tackled immediately. It looks like they lost a little yardage. On, uh, I think that's it. That'll be it. They'll walk over to their sideline. We're down to 10 seconds. They will not have to snap it again. And this one is in the books. The Panthers win it. 45-17 here tonight at Panther Stadium over the Cross at Eagles. Got our Domino's post-game show coming your way. We'll name our People's Bank player of the game. This is Panther football. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. Nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. The Magnolia Family Medical Clinic is your hometown provider for all members of your family. The Magnolia Family Medical Clinic provides pediatric checkups with immunizations,